I know we're there. Mm -hmm. You just can't see us. Yes. Yet. We've been there. We. <laughs> Not gay, but we. Um, but we haven't been acknowledged. So the next step is acknowledging um, that God made all of us. If you believe in God, you can't go around saying, oh, we believe in God, except for the mistake he made and giving us gay people and brown people and yellow people and so yeah. and smart people that and get smart, in the way yeah smart, smart, smart people, people yes yeah and, and uh, so so it comes back to we are all who we are we, I'm you you're me we're we are each other and the the genius of Gene Roddenberry was to make that not only known, but suddenly and, and acceptable, but wanted. We want to be part of that, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 I know he's brown with blonde hair or whatever. <laughs> suddenly, acceptance of, of intelligence, of, of, of people. Um, accepting what we're offering um, is the, in, in a word is equality respect on a basis of equality because you're not doing me any favors <laughs> it was my right to begin with and to acknowledge that <clears throat> takes you a step higher than you were 15 minutes ago when you didn't hire blacks and women or yellow brown red Absolutely. And there was a time. I'm old enough to have come into that era. Keep it gay, keep it light, keep it fresh, keep it fair. Let it bloom every night. Give it room. Give never it stand air. still. Keep, keep your love a lovely dream and never wait. Come on, Mike. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Keep it gay, keep it gay. Keep it gay. Good evening and welcome to another virtual celebration brought to you by your friends here at, now say it with me, Gays in Space. Tonight, we're joined by two immensely talented performers who have become trailblazers in the Star Trek universe. He portrays the first openly gay character in the franchise's history, and she the mother of all Klingons. From Star Trek Discovery, Anthony Rapp and Mary Chifo are with us. Plus, brand new live Trek-inspired musical performances by Kira Knotts and Nathan Bonk. Now please, welcome your host, Dan, Dan DV. 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 Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We are super excited because, as you just heard, we have two of Discovery's finest with us. Please say hello to Anthony Rapp and Mary Chifo. How are you guys? Oh, we have to unmute you. Or Rick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, go. yes. <laughs> hello. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Greetings from New York. Yeah, greetings from LA. We got the coast covered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now you were, uh, we were talking a little bit before we went on. Uh, Mary, it's, it's a little bit different now in New York than in California. New Yorkers, we've been, we've been pretty good. We're, we're going down, but California, not so much. Are you guys still very much in? isolation and social distancing and, and the whole thing? Well, we are not uh, currently um, required to be so. There has been a lot of opening up, which is causing un an unfortunate spike in cases. So I am someone who has not left my house in a very long time. <laughs> so I'm doing, my, I'm doing my part. And there are people that are, I mean, there are a lot of very um, conscientious uh, people here as well, but it's a real mixture and California is so vast, you know, we, we have a higher population than all of Canada. So 
a lot of people to try and um, tell. Oh, and now I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't know. Some sort of plane's going by. All sorts of fun. It's fine. Yeah. It's not the apocalypse. It's fine. Totally <laughs> 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 fine here in my center. We're great. Uh, no, but but truly, uh, I you know I I am lucky enough to know a lot of people who are living here that are being responsible and. Um, I encourage everyone, you know, to wear their masks when they're out, uh, to stay in uh, when they can. And um, yeah, so it's, I mean, uncertain, unprecedented times, but hopefully yeah. embrace the Trek ideals of uh, trying to be there for your fellow man and woman. And we'll see. <laughs> the needs of the many. The needs of the many. The needs of the many. There you go. Yeah, uh, in New York, we just we just entered our official phase two, which means like uh, sidewalk cafes are opening in restaurants. And but like it's, it, it, you know, our governor has frankly been pretty great at a lot of things around this. And so the restaurant, um, they, they can easily get permits now, like within an hour if they do the proper paperwork to be able to do that kind of thing. It's just it, it feels like things are being very carefully regulated very carefully approached and today my fiance ken and i went on our first outside the house date at a restaurant on a, in a sidewalk cafe all the staff was wearing masks they were wearing gloves when they served us we were we wore a mask to and from the restaurant most people on the streets in new york are wearing masks um and it was it was a little strange to be to emerge that way but it was also really inspiring to mm -hmm. see people taking it seriously and to enjoy some really good food and to support our local restaurants. It's like, it's one of our favorite places that have been here ever since I moved into this apartment. Yeah, you know. well, we, uh, Rich and I both, uh, we have gotten so used to the, the self-isolation, he and I being in this apartment in Hell's Kitchen, we've gotten so used to it that when the curfew of 8 p.m. was, was instituted in New York, which was what, like, two, three weeks ago? Two, okay. it, it, it was a while ago. We had no idea it had been lifted because we were just like, nope, staying in, got to be in before eight. Yeah. You know, that's just how we live now. And when I realized it had been over for weeks, I felt really silly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, I remember seeing, overdid it. Yeah. I know, I know a, a, like a social science person who's like really, he knows a lot about sociology. And he said that, at the beginning of all this he's like human beings are very adaptable you'll be surprised if you people can adapt you know and yeah it's strange but like everybody in my circle seems to have adapted pretty well it can be a little stressful and strange but we make it work yeah you know i mean i, I if i'm being honest i found that because with zoom like luckily with all the technology i still am able to connect and do wonderful yeah. events like this and see people and you know work on creative projects and so i have kind of really enjoyed being in my own space and not having that extra, having to, you know, drive one place or another. And that's drive. the thing. Always, you finally driving. don't have to drive. That's amazing. Yeah, which is also good for the environment. So yes. I just, but um, yeah, I, I have definitely found that, of course, I miss, you know, extra human contact and such, but, um, but human connection. And the thing with Zoom, or just any of this sort of stuff, the, you're required to be present with people in a really interesting way. Like the room for small talk and like you can't quite have it in that same way. So you kind of have to really be with people. And um, so I'm trying to, you know, learn from that and, and incorporate that as I, mm -hmm. you know, once things do start opening back up and really, you know, take that to heart and be present with people in that same way. Sure. So, yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> yes. I also just say, Mary, how amazing you look on Zoom. Like, <laughs> you're gorgeous. Like, we, we all know you're gorgeous, but how are you also gorgeous on Zoom? What's I, going on? Well, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm not one to uh, pretend. I do have a nice LED light shining on me. <laughs> so this, this is my setup um that i i have on my desk but um and also i'm i you know i have a, lots of time to put on makeup now no. <laughs> but thank you thank you <laughs> you look amazing um 
I also, you know what, I want to talk, before we open it up to questions, because the fans, I'm sure, have a ton of questions for you guys. Uh, but before we do that, um, I want to talk a little bit about the charity that we're working with this week. Um, the, the first couple of Zoom events that we did like this, we didn't know what we were doing. So we just kind of did them, and we've been figuring it out, you know, like as we go. Um, but we started, uh, I guess it was uh, two events ago, we partnered with the ACLU because I thought, again, we're not quite sure what we're doing, and the ACLU is big enough that if we mess up, they're not going to be mad at us. So, so we partnered with them for two separate events mm -hmm. and uh, combined with those two events, we were able to donate from everyone who uh, paid more than a dollar for their ticket. Um, we were able to donate $500 to the ACLU, which is, you know, it's small, but you know, it's something. Mm -hmm. Well, we matched that tonight with this one event. That's so... Great. Awesome. We're so happy, and Mary, I am so thrilled that you suggested this organization because this is what we want to be doing. We want to be helping the smaller groups that aren't getting, you know, as much attention as Black Lives Matter and the ACLU, which are hugely important organizations. But since we can only contribute a modest amount, we would love to see it go places where it will mean more. So can you talk about the charity for tonight? Yes, absolutely. I'll talk a little bit about um, how I came upon this incredible organization. Um, our, early on, when we had our, our um, surge of information, and I really, I remember the week where the protests really started happening, um, I canceled all of my, any coffee dates, you know, virtual coffee dates, anything like that, and I really wanted to hunker down and start educating myself both on the larger systemic issues and also on ways to be active and activated um, in, during this time. And something I really became impassioned about was, yes, focusing on smaller groups that weren't as well known, like obviously to support these larger organizations that are doing so much is excellent. And then also part of why, so this is, they are the National Queer and Trans Therapists of Color Network. And something that I was seeing both from um, uh, friends and colleagues on Twitter and Instagram vocalizing where to focus energy. Mental health is, is something that um, is so long-term um, and something that I'm really passionate about and I think very important um, to support overall. Um, and so I was really thrilled to find this particular organization because as we know, the queer and trans community um, within the black community is one that needs to be elevated and celebrated. Um, and uh, so I was actually just going to read because their website is excellent. I encourage everyone to go to their website. It's very comprehensive, very well formatted. Um, but just they have their mission, vision, and um, values very succinctly put. So I'll let that. Um, no, no, I'll. Work. Okay. Uh, so their mission is National Queer and Trans Therapist of Color Network is a healing justice organization committed to transforming mental health for queer and trans people of color, QTPOC. Vision, we envision a world where all people have access to healing resources rooted in social justice and liberation to recover from trauma, violence, and systemic oppression. Wow, it's really, there you go. I know, it, it really, it is, it's. Yeah. Um, we specifically acknowledge the harm and violence perpetuated by the medical industrial complex and actively work to both intervene directly on this system as well as create new systems of care for our communities. And values, exquisite care, trust, interdependence, courage and humility, accountability, healing, freedom and liberation, radical imagination. So pretty amazing. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's incredible the work that they do. I, I always marvel at the people who say to themselves, there's a problem and we need to come together and, and fix it, even if it is the most insurmountable, seemingly the most insurmountable problem. People still come together and they create amazing organizations like that and make a difference. They, they, they change things. And I believe when it comes to mental health right now, of course, with, with COVID, we are dealing with a, a physical threat, but that physical threat 
has an emotional, you know, uh, mental impact on people who are suddenly so disassociated and then put on top of that, the, I, I don't even know what to call what's been happening in our country and, and the fact that it seems to every day somehow there's a new, more horrific story. Um, so it is so important. Our, all of us, our mental health is so important, but for the, the especially the, the, the trans community of color, it's just so important that we support them and do whatever we can. So um, thank you so much, Mary, for, for bringing the organization to our attention and uh, for all your help and Anthony's help in promoting tonight. Uh, people are super excited to talk to you guys, so I'll stop talking soon. Um, but it really means the world. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. I'm so thrilled. And uh, Rich, get ready with the slideshow because uh, what you guys might not know out there is that both Anthony and Mary have already been to some Gaze in Space events, and uh, they have been so cool and fun uh, that we put together a little slideshow uh, of our favorite moments. Uh, Anthony joined us in Las Vegas in 2018. Uh, with, there we go. Yes. Aww. Oh, there we go. Uh, and Mary was on the cruise with us in 2019, and she sang her heart out, everybody, up there on the karaoke <gasps> stage. Wait, there's another one. Come, bam! Yeah. Yes. Singing it out. Yes. We had, uh, we just had so much fun with you guys. And, you know, it's, uh, the I mean, Wilson's not here, but how could you not show that photo of him with the, like, <laughs> I, you have to show it. You know, Mary, like, what did you, you know, sing? You know I, I sang both Dancing Queen and okay. Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> okay, fair enough, yep. Didn't realize yep. how, uh, how many verses that song has. Oh my God. That was definitely one of those like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone did was- you put awesome. a little, Did you put a little Bonnie Tyler Stank on it? I did my best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, yes, it was uh, incredible. And uh, next year, Anthony, you're coming on the cruise next year, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it <happens. laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> We want to be on a cruise ship right now? I'm like, oh, man, you know, yes. Fingers crossed. If, if, and, if and when there's a cruise that's safe to do, yes, I will be on the cruise. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. It's and a I, great time. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yes. Hi, Dan and Rich. We have a couple people in the chat who are requesting that we put it in gallery view so that they can see everybody talking. Um, okay, well, that's a rich thing. That's a rich thing. <laughs> I, messaged, that? I messaged Rich. <laughs> Oh, Thanks, did that, guys. You did it? Great, babe. Thank you. That's uh, Mr. Richard Hart, the first gentleman of Gaze in Space every month. Uh, he, he is five feet away from me. Okay, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> there he is. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's open it up to some questions. Uh, Walt, do we have a video question ready to go? Sure. So let's bring on the first person. Uh, this will be, be Rob Pivarnik. He had his hand raised fairly early. So I guess it's, it's, it's a pressing question. So give me a minute. Let me, uh, let me try and see. Me, um, and this is Walt, everybody. Walt hey, is a member you, of the Gaze in Space family. Yeah. Where yeah. are you, Walt? Hey, uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm actually based uh, outside of Phil uh, Philadelphia. So... Okay, cool. yeah. 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 Uh, Walt is a, a buddy of mine that uh, we met in an electronics uh, uh, workshop uh, uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, despite uh, him being a total nerd, he is a bit of a Star Trek nerd, uh, uh, our virgin, uh, that we are slowly getting him uh, indoctrinated <laughs> into the franchise. And this is I a great way. But, but it's good because, you know, sometimes you have to pause to explain, you know, obscure Star Trek references to him, which, you know, helps everyone out. By the way, but you'll appreciate this. I made, uh, oh wait, 
Wait, oh, there. I made oh, a mushroom. Yeah. That's awesome. It's not, it's, you know, it's not much, but I'm trying to keep up with like the Joneses tonight. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Kira, I can't uh, promote Rob. So either promote me and then I'll promote Rob, or you can just kick Rob, Rob up to the front, to the front of the, uh, of the room. We're promoting to panelists, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, nice meeting everyone. I'm gonna yeah, nice meeting you. just <laughs> crawl back into like my hiding spot again. Uh, and, and while we're waiting for that to happen, oh. everyone, uh, Kira Knox, Kira, say hi to everybody. Hello, I'm Kira. <laughs> Later <laughs> on, uh, Kira is going to be wowing us with uh, some music that is just one of the coolest things about these virtual celebrations is that I've asked friends of mine who are also Trekkies to just come up with something that's kind of Star Trek themed, but also a little quarantine, and, and they do it. And every time it's amazing. So uh, later on, we're going to have a little, uh, a little interlude with Kira and uh, another of our guys, Nathan. Uh, cool, are we? All right, we've got Rob is. live with us here. Hi, everybody. Happy Pride. I love you all. Hi. Happy Pride. Happy um, Pride. As somebody who was in front of his TV on September 8th, 1966, I've been a Trekkie since before the term was even coined. Wow. And I learned not to be, you know, how the bigotry was stupid from the crew of the Starship Enterprise. Um, over the years, I've had a chance to tell a few of the cast members how grateful I am for that. Um, and my question to the panel is, what were your early experiences? I was, I was called the F slur years before I even knew what the word meant. What was your first experience with bigotry or homophobia and who was there to help you realize that it was the other person who was in the wrong? It's a really interesting question. I, I wish I had a really a vivid answer for experiencing it toward me. But the truth is, um, I, I grew up in the theater world and I was doing professional theater from such a young age and I was around Same. queer people. Um, from such a young age, I don't remember even when I became aware of labels at all or words at all um, associated with it. I just had some awareness that, you know, there were people who liked, you know, men who liked men. I, I, I truly do not remember when the, when, the, when the terms became known to me. Um, I do remember having a sort of internally homophobic reaction of my own once when I was a teenager walking around Chicago and um, I, I walked past a gay bar uh, and I saw two men kissing in the window and I kind of like, it kind of jolted me. It was a shocking sight. Um, so that was my own kind of like reckoning with things that I hadn't quite processed for myself. I think that that's maybe the, the best I can say. I don't remember having anyone point to me and say something terrible to me ever. Um, so I don't know if that kind of answers your question, but I can, I can say looking back, like that was a, you know, a, a, a blip moment of like, uh, I had to kind of realize that that's something that I wanted and it was scary to think that, and, you know, I, I think I was around 15, 16, something like that. And yeah. I'd even kind of like, I even kind of like dallied a little bit, experimented with my, my friends when I was younger, you know, like male friends, but we never kissed. It was never romantic. It was just purely like experimental. So that was, it was that extra level of like romance that kind of like went Ooh, zing, 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 be careful, careful, danger, danger kind of thing. Was your family there for you when you came out? Were they supportive? Yeah. I mean, my mom, um, she was a nurse and uh, so this was in the, this was in the late eighties. Um, and, you know, I knew actors who died that I'd worked with from AIDS and HIV related uh -huh. illness. Um, so she was mostly just scared a little bit. She was, she was a very well aware of what was happening with AIDS and HIV. She was really concerned for my well-being. She was concerned for my happiness. It wasn't, there wasn't any kind of like homophobic, you know, fearful language like that. It was mostly like, I'm worried about you. I'm worried that you're gonna, you know, be safe and I'm worried, safe from the disease, but also safe from the world being a dangerous world for people who are queer kind of thing. But yes, uh, she was supportive and with like fear, if that makes any sense. Uh, oh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 
Yeah. I also would, oh, I just wanted to say Anthony's book is fantastic. If you haven't read it, he talks a lot about that. And I, I read it uh, back when I was in high school and I was a big Rent fan. So uh, yeah, it's wonderful. So your book's great. And I thought it was really helpful. My brother's gay and um, he was very, he, his coming out went very poorly. And our parents are, our parents are Roman Catholic. They, um, they're fine now. They're much better now. But um, initially it was really hard for him. And I think he waited until his mid twenties because it was so hard. And you know, I said, you have to read Anthony's book. It's really good. Um, and I think he found a lot. I think he found, um, you know, a lot of good things in there too. So thanks for that book. It's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. So great to hear. Um, I was also very lucky that um, my parents were extremely um, um, open-minded and supportive of um, the gay community always. And uh, I actually, it, what came up for me was on the positive side, um, our dear friends, uh, Todd Holland and Scotch Ellis Loring um, were my first gay wedding when I was eight years old. And the only, the only and really fun fact, uh, Wilson Cruz was there. Uh, because uh, he uh, was, uh, he uh, was my so-called life, and uh, so unbeknownst to us, we, this was revealed to us after we started working together on track again. So that's wild. But um, apparently, the only question I asked when my mom said, "You know, Todd and Scotch, they're going to get married," I said, "Oh, cool. Who's going to wear the dress?" And uh, <laughs> my mom said, "I don't think either of them will. But if either of them want to, they can." And I said, okay. And then I was, you know, um, we had their um, wedding shower here at our house and it was very celebratory. So for me, that's just one shiny example of m the multitude of times that it was just made clear to me that that was wonderful and acceptable. When it comes to anything uh, pinging me, I do remember when the, the that's so gay term was really being thrown around. And I luckily, I think because I had been surrounded by so much positivity, um, I remember being like, I just don't, that doesn't track for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> As a slur. Being, this is being used <laughs> in a negative way, and I don't see anything negative about being gay. So I'm not going to use that term. It doesn't make sense. And uh, I feel like I did a pretty good job of calling people out on it, too. I was, uh, <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm a headstrong lady. So uh, I uh, definitely <laughs> did not uh, let people get away with stuff like that and um yeah and so we've all seen you with that left so yeah, they yeah, exactly. should not <laughs> yeah. now nobody um but yeah i i uh, feel very very grateful that i was raised in an environment um that and then as a woman just being encouraged to be all that i was always um to have masculinity and femininity within myself and celebrate both so i feel very grateful for that and that's part of why i am so impassioned to vocalize um is because that that I want everyone to have that experience. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, both thank of you, you and the rest of you, you. Uh, panelists. Thank you very much for letting me be a part of this. Um, thank you. Be safe. Be safe. Take I love care. you and live long and Take prosper. Care. Take care. Love the shirt too. Thank you, Rob. Love Take one. care, everybody. Bye bye. All right, Rob, hang tight. I'm gonna. No, he's gone. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I, you Who know, did that? I, I beat him to the punch, you know. It was, now that I got my, now that I got like, I was my, just gonna let like him my, know he like was going back to back. attendee, Walt. I got my old job back. I'm like, you know, quick on the trigger now. All right, Walt. Well, who's next? Let's bring in the next person. Okay, so next we are going to bring in. Uh, let's see if I can go over here. Uh, let's bring in Linda Acevedo. Uh, Acevedo, yes. Acevedo, okay. Acevedo. <laughs> so, Linda, you might have to unmute um, your microphone. Uh, you might see a pop up. Yeah, see it. All right. Can you hear me now? Can, can you get on camera, Linda? I hit it. That's no, weird. can you get on like your your, your angle? Your oh, camera's okay. on. It's just, there, there you go. go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. First thing is first, I am so glad that you guys are having another one of these events. Every time you guys do this, it's amazing. The courses that you donate to are amazing. I think it's fantastic that you guys are finding a smaller organization this time to champion and to help raise awareness and help raise money for. Um, I can't believe that I get to talk to Anthony Rapp and Mary. I mean, this is amazing to me. 
Uh, I would like to start with uh, speaking to Anthony Rapp. Uh, while I was in college, I've always been a huge theater fan ever since the third grade. But when I was in college was when I started um, becoming more involved in the theater community. And it gave me a chance to get to know more and more people from the queer community and people who just were on the fringes of things and figuring things out. And I'll never forget the day that my best friend, uh, Lanair, who happens to be uh, a gay male, he went and he gave me, uh, he, he comes to me while I was um, working in the costume shop. And he's like, you have to hear this, you have to hear this. And he sticks these earphones in my ear and he starts playing Rent for me. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was just like, give me that. <laughs> I listened to the whole thing. And we must have played that play over and over again, thousands of times over the four years that we were in college. And I always, mm. always identified the most with the character of Mark. And I thought you were absolutely amazing playing him. Thank you. I've, I've seen it played by many people and they, everybody was talented and everybody brought their own spin to the, to the part. But you, you always really spoke to me as a character and uh, the way you portrayed it was just amazing. And to finally get a chance to tell you that, that makes me really, really happy. Thank uh, you. Mary, my question for you is, where did you get that freaking awesome necklace and how do we get it? Yes. Is that, I've been staring at it ever since you came on camera. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the the um, uh, Make It So, as in S-E-W. Oh, Mickey. Aww. Mickey. Yeah, um, that's, I, I know at the time, this, I, I think this was the last one. This was uh, Vegas Con uh, two years ago, I think. I think yeah, 2018. Yeah, Amy's got hers as well, right? I do, I got yeah. it. <laughs> um, I know this, this is one of the last ones then, but she, uh, I'm not sure what the status what of, the, the, of that list of necklaces is currently, but um, yeah, it's, it's, what I love too for conventions is it doesn't move. And with necklaces, it's always just like this thing. So I can actually like feel confident taking photos because it doesn't, it's like just very sturdy. <laughs> and then it's clearly a bat list. So it's just a win all around. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up everybody else's time. Thank, thank you both. I mean, your, your performances on the show are amazing. They're thank heartbreaking you. at times. Um, and I'm just so proud to be an ally. And I'm really proud that my friend from high school, my friend from all these years ago, has this opportunity to create these situations for people. I've never been prouder of you, Dan, honestly. And I say that every time, but every time it becomes more true. So, oh, you guys are friends from high school. That's cool. Yeah, yep. That's cool. Which made, which made me Wait. laugh, Dan, when you said you had to go to when you had to go to Rich to get uh, the technical stuff fixed, considering the high school we went to. That's kind of embarrassing, but it's true. Know, Did you go to Brooklyn you know, Tech? Yeah. Techies for life, man. You, you can't we, the roots. <laughs> oh, we fixed it? Okay. We're techie trickies. <laughs> techie trickies. We actually, yes, uh, we are. <laughs> Linda and I went to the lesser known tech. We went to Staten Island. Tech. Uh, oh. And Linda right now, oh, sorry, uh, actually knew me when I was Danny. Oh, Danny. <laughs> Little baby Danny. Look at look at Anthony's cat. What's your cat's name? Ferdinand. This is one of three. Oh, Aww. I have I have two. I have two. They're keeping us good company during quarantine. Whenever huh? I do anything Zoom related, yeah. they the, the one or both of the their brother and sister, two of them, and they come all the, every time. So yes. What's their job? Right. They're doing yeah. their job. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Linda, thank you so much. It's always so great to see you. Thank you. Uh, and, thank you, uh, you know, we promise to keep these things churning out, so we'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Well, nice to meet you. Thank you for your very kind words. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Amazing to meet you both. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Walt, bring in the next person. And while you're doing that, uh, hey, Kira, do we have any text questions that are... Uh, you know, super interesting and fun that you want to throw in while we set that up. We do have questions in the chat. Let me just go through, see which ones we got. All righty. 
Um, by the way, uh, uh, we were just uh, throwing on some uh, movies the other night, and Adventures in Babysitting came on, and I had no idea, Anthony, that you were in that, because it was, like, that is, like, a childhood movie of mine, like, as old, as far back as I can remember, and you played, you played such a good little snot in it. Uh, very you. convincing. So, uh, yeah, oh, I absolutely love that movie. So, Thank yeah. You. That was fun. All right. So this is from our friend Brian. Um, he wants to know if you have a favorite moment from filming Discovery or specifically anything that really stands out for you while you were filming. It's, when, the, I, these questions are understandable, but they're like, it's so hard to isolate one thing because it's been such a dreamy experience. Do you want to go first, Mary? Um, I, it's going to take right. me a minute to figure I, I, out what I want to say. <laughs> I feel similarly that there are just so many uh, wonderful moments. One that always comes up for me was in the first season filming Despite Yourself, the 10th episode that Jonathan Frakes directed, um, because that was such a thrill for all of us to have him there. And we had had like a, um, a cast dinner at Jason Isaacs and he had, you know, chatted with us. And so I, for me, it's always, I always try and get to know who I'm working with in human form before they meet me on set because it's a different experience. And uh, so I was grateful we'd had a lovely exchange there. And I do think I remember him saying, you know, I've been on a Klingon ship <laughs> or something like that. And I was like, and then of course, the person who had watched all the Klingon episodes, I was like, oh, I know, in episode of, you know, just geeking out a lot. But um, aside from that, just the thrill of having him and the energy that he brings to the set, both for the actors and the crew. Um, for me, it was this that big pivotal scene between Tyler and Laurel in the jail cell when he comes back and I say the prayer and it's got so many layers. And, you know, when you don't know the full circumstances as we knew the audience wouldn't, it was going to come off a certain way. So for us, for, for Shazad and myself, we really wanted it to have the integrity of the truth behind it so that people could watch it in hindsight and realize what was really going on. Um, and so we had worked on it. We had talked with Sean Cochran, who had written the episode. And then when we got to set that day, um, we, we, you know, had the rehearsal, read it, and I was just, yeah, all right, do it. And uh, he's so awesome because uh, for us, he was in the jail cell. Like there's video village like outside of the jail cell, but he had a monitor like right by the jail cell. Uh, you know, not in frame, but just, but just not in frame. And he's there and going, yes, yes, go, 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 yes, bring it home, more, more. And then like near the end, when I really start saying the Klingon and stuff, he's like, say the Klingon again, go, go. And then like getting Shazad to run back and forth. And like, it was just so thrilling because it's, it's a lot with the prosthetics and the, you know, and the lighting. And I, you know, I come from a theater background and it's very different from that. Um, and yet also the most theatrical. But to get that sensation of like, I really felt like an actor that day um, and was just finding this scene on such an exciting level was so cool. And then the little button of that story is that Sonequa and Jason happened to be there early for their scene that was upcoming. So they had been watching unbeknownst to us. And Sonequa, of course, comes in and he's like crying and was like, you guys, it's beautiful. You know, we had this weird love rectangle hug and like, it was just, it was a great day. And it was all happened before like 12 p.m. Like, <laughs> because we had such an early call because it was a Monday. But yeah, that's yeah. definitely. And Frank's also super efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Like the most efficient. Yeah. Yeah. He's a real pro. So yeah. So that's definitely. That's one I like to pull out because it just covers a lot of bases of what I love about being a part of this show in the franchise. I, I, I really love being able to picture you in the full makeup and them <laughs> crying and you hugging and oh, like, yes. oh, we love you. Like, yeah, that's awesome. It, yeah, it's very real. <laughs> the, the Mary underneath the Laurel, she comes out and everyone's like, what? Isn't there, a, isn't there a video of you in full Laurel makeup of you dancing? Um, yes. I yes. Forget to, yeah. I forget that who it's like a like a lip sync or like yeah. A, yeah. It was yeah. confident. Demi Lovato's confident. There it is, Demi Lovato. I had, yeah, in the second season, that had been one of my uh, warm up anthems that I would play in the prosthetic trailer a lot. Just ask James McKinnon, and 
I, I had had this idea in my head of like, oh, I'm in this fabulous outfit, I should do it. And then Hugo Villasenor, who's one of the other amazing prosthetic artists, uh, he was with um, me that day. And I said, Hugo, just set your phone up. I'm gonna go. I looked at Shazad and I was like, I'm gonna start dancing and you can come in, if it, you know, come in if you like. We'll, yeah. And that we did that in one take. And, uh, and then we went on, cause they were setting up the, a big crane shot or something. So we had this little extra time. But I'm very glad it happened because it is yeah. one of my proudest moments. This is a part of the show. <laughs> it all came from um, Yeah, uh, I would say something. It's uh, there's so many. Well, the one you, you she reminded me of Frank. So there are many happy memories with Frank. One of the happiest memories this past season. There's a new cast member, uh, and I was there on the first day that this new. I don't. Well, I can't spoil anything about who this person is or what the <laughs> role is or anything. But being there on the day the first day that this new cast member and this new cast member just graduated from uh from from college this is this cast member's first professional job and on set jonathan breaks is directing and i'm uh off camera watching the the take because we have a scene together but first you know this other stuff and we're together watching the monitor watching this green young first day on a professional set do the most beautiful present work and both of us just look at each other and say wow like we were witnessing the birth of of a brilliant new career that's one of my very 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 happiest memories of, of the recent season and i can't wait for you to meet this this person uh on screen i think uh anthony i think it's okay to tell everybody it's me and i play a young captain kirk and yes i did just graduate from college so, and I, and I, rip, I, rip my, I rip my tunic in fights. I have fist fights and I rip my tunic. And dude, we made that scene go in a direction no one expected. That if, the, if the plot calls for it, the plot calls for it. I mean, you know, <laughs> we're just a slave to the writing, you know, aren't we all? <laughs> awesome. I think we have Paul with us. Paul? Are you Hi, Paul. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Mary, Hi, Anthony. It's a pleasure to, to talk to you both. Uh, Dan asked me to come on tonight. Uh, it was it's it's been a pleasure going to the Gays in Space events uh, since 2017, and cool. many many cool. of the photos that you've seen, I was the one who took those photos. Oh, cool! And yes. uh, yeah, and I what I really wanted to convey is that when you take a, a photo, really a great photo is a result of a special moment. And for me, Anthony, I wanted to mention that. Yours and Wilson's appearance at the Gaze in Space uh, in 2018, I think it was, 2018, <laughs> was a, a, an amazing moment uh, for all of us who are in the LGBT community because as a, as a gay Star Trek fan, you, you and Wilson are, are playing regular uh, characters on the cast. And yeah. although Star Trek always had diversity and there was the various stepping stones within the franchise uh, towards LGBT equality. It was really that, that moment on Discovery when both of you were cast. So myself and others, when we saw you uh, come to that event that night, it was a moving moment. And I've had many opportunities to take, you know, pictures for gays in space. And, uh, but that night, that moment, I think the beauty of those pictures came out because it was really representing the beauty of that moment and the recognition from everybody in that room uh, when, um, when yourself and Wilson talked about, you know, being a part of the community and representing us uh, within the Star Trek franchise. And outside of Star Trek, you're both advocates. Uh, it, it was quite the, the moving moment. And I, I think that came, came through in the pictures, uh, but I, I just wanted to tell you that personally that, uh, and I know you already know this, but in more ways than one, uh, your, your role on the show is your, as well as your role outside the show has meant a lot to the LGBT community. And uh, you've impacted many, many by that. So, uh, you know, I wanted to say that to you. Appreciate it, thank you. Yes. And, and to Mary, it was a fun night. Yes, <laughs> yes. What I wanted, to, what I want, what did I, what I wanted to ask was, did you realize the level of gravity when you were cast in the role and in the franchise as a member of the first gay couple? 
I get, I think I didn't. Hmm, I did and I didn't. I mean, um, I have a friend who's one of my dearest friends who's been a long time fan of Star Trek, and he was part of like the early days when they were min when the fan community would like mimeograph newsletters. He was, you know, he was part of like the early slash fiction, you know, Kirk Spock, you know, love affair stories that were being written. Um, he's gay. He was, you know, he had friends who were in the gay community of Star Trek fandom. So, I mean, I think I was tangentially aware of it, but really it was when I started talking to him about getting cast that he imparted to me even, I, I became even that much more aware of how, how much of a breakthrough it was within the Trek universe. Um, I was certainly really aware of what it meant to be a part of Star Trek in general. And that was, that was something that I just never thought for myself. Like I thought, I'm a nerd, I'm a fan. I like, love these kinds of things. I never thought of myself being in any of them. Mm. I never, it just never occurred to me that that might happen to me. Um, so that was my first excitement. And then, then it became clearer and clearer what a, what a meaningful thing it was. And then when Wilson, I've known Wilson for years and years and years, and I know what an activist he is and I'm an activist. and so it felt like a really great um, opportunity for both of us to take on that dual role of being in the show, but also being a public representative outside the show. It just felt like a great sort of confluence of circumstances. Mm -hmm. So when we, then were, when we were shooting it, we became that much more like the certain big landmark scenes. We were like, we're, we know that this is a big deal, you know? And then we hoped that it would be well received. And, and it continued, you know, especially in this most recent times in the last year, uh, it's been especially important. Yeah. Uh, and then my question for Mary was going to be, did you realize uh, being cast as a Klingon, what that would uh, entail? <laughs> Becoming the, the mother of the empire. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's yeah, so many layers to it because when I was initially cast, I didn't know what Laurel's journey would be. So it was initially, yes, oh my gosh, Klingon. And as I said, uh, I did, when I'm nervous, I do research. And so I ordered all the Klingon books and looked up all the Klingon things and uh, copied the Klingon dictionary completely into my notebook. Like I wrote it out word for word just because I was so nervous and didn't have the script to look at. Um, and watch the Klingon centric episodes uh, in, it, in their entirety. So I can officially say that I moved from um, every different series, every Klingon featured episode. Um, and uh, so that was my initial reaction of being like, okay, I gotta know what we're talking about. And even though we are earlier in the timeline, um, I still wanted to be informed um, as to how the Klingons had been betrayed and what their history was and everything. So um, that element uh, was exciting. And yeah, but then once we got on set creating the character and then Laurel's development really happened as the season <laughs> progressed. So for me, it was a kind of daily basis finding out where her journey was going, which was very <laughs> exciting and nerve wracking. Um, but didn't know that she was going to take the mantle of leadership the way she did until, I don't know if you remember, Anthony, like we were on a phone call where they gave us like a general sense yeah. of finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, and Laurel will take the detonator and become the leader of the Klingons. And I was like, yes. cool, great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, um, I, I just wanted to thank you both for coming on and it was a pleasure being able to talk to you both. And the last thing I just wanted to say is uh, all of the Discovery cast uh, have been very welcoming to the fan community. Uh, all the convention appearances, we can't say more than enough. And, uh, you know, in terms of cast, you're one of the most friendly cast to the fans. And uh, we appreciate that as fans because, um, you know, we we value our your screen time within the franchise. And it's nice to know that you value us as fans. I just want to say, Dan, to you and Gaze in Space, thank, thank you for, as a fan uh, for bringing these uh, events together and allowing us to be a part of something special. And in my, my own way, I've tried to capture those moments in, in the pictures, uh, which that's really what you got to look for is those special moments. But, uh, and, and, and that's one of mine right there, but uh, I appreciate that. And I, I also want to say is that some of my bestest friends I have met through uh, Gaze in Space. And if, if it wasn't for this 
organization and these events, which brought us all together, uh, I wouldn't have some of the good friends that I have today. So uh, that's a thank you to Dan and, and Rich on that. But I know other folks want to get on the line, so I, I don't want to take up too much more time. Thank you both. Thank you, uh, Mary thank and you. Anthony. Paul. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. <laughs> For those in our audience who don't know, you can learn Klingon through Duolingo. Mm -hmm. That was a very good ad voice, Kara. <laughs> I, I, I have to echo what Paul said because um, uh, I, I didn't really get to introduce myself. I'm Amy Imhoff. I, I speak at Star Trek Las Vegas and Shore Leave, and uh, I'm on a lot of podcasts, and I do a lot with Gaze in Space, and I also work with Kate Mulgrew. And I have to say that the Discovery cast has been incredible to work with, and you guys are excellent ambassadors for the franchise. And it is... It is so refreshing and lovely to have, you know, a, a fresh crop of faces that is super excited just to be there. And it's, it's so nice. And, you know, just, just seeing everyone interacting with and how excited you were. You know, Mary, I love how you are on Twitter. When, when someone says something incorrect about Klingon history, she's like, no, actually, in the Kittimer Accords, it states yeah. X, Y, Z. And I'm like, good job, girl. <laughs> Scorpio. Scorpio. <laughs> I do think that, definitely. And I'm, I'm, my, my uh, moon is in Aries, so it's a lot. It's a lot of <laughs> There you go. Um, but yeah, thank, yeah, thank, thank you guys. And I, you know, just just having hosted, I I host the Women in Star Trek panel um, every year at Star Trek Las Vegas, and Mary was with us last year. And just getting that badass Klingon energy, and you know, fresh from having been the mother of the Empire, it's like it it was it was a very cool moment for for you and for the Klingons and for the character and for women on Trek too. So, and obviously, Anthony, we cannot state the importance of seeing you and Wilson as a couple. That was that just like. My brother's been watching Star Trek with me since we were, I was like seven and he was four and he was like, there's actually a gay couple on Star Trek. <laughs> it only Not took wrong. 30, it only took me 30 years to see it because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's there, he's just turned 34 last week. So yeah, yeah, cool. Just, it, it's been such a gift for me to witness Anthony and Wilson, both in their roles, but also on panels and speaking so eloquently to their experience and being, you know, out actors playing out roles. I just... It's been very um, inspiring to me um, and really continued to make me impassioned about the importance of having the representation, you know, on screen and having the actors playing it, being able to articulate their own experiences. I think that that's, you know, highly important that we, we see more and more of that, so. Thank you. And uh, not to continue to stroke Anthony's ego too much longer, <laughs> I am going to add one thing here. Uh, when you came to Gaze in Space that year in, in 2018, uh, I'm not sure if you were, if you really knew what you were kind of walking into. I think it was kind of nebulous, like, what are they? Let's see. And the look on your faces when you guys walked out on that stage and it was two levels packed with people and the, it felt like day. Mardi Gras. Maybe that was redundant. <laughs> it felt like Mardi Gras. And, and when you guys walked on stage, I, I mean, everyone erupted. And Wilson took the mic and he said, hi, I'm Wilson Cruz. This is Anthony Rapp. And we're your days in space. And the yes. whole place. <laughs> He's funny. Yes. That's Amazing. Awesome. He's good at that sort of thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Walt, cue up the next person, and while you're doing that, I think it's time to treat you guys to a little musical interlude. Uh, virtual celebrations on Zoom are, you know, Zoom chatty chats, but you both know gays in space. We don't do things the same as everybody else. So we had to throw in some performance. So, uh, Rich, can you go ahead and cue up uh, Nathan's performance for tonight. Uh, I think particularly, Anthony, you're going to be like, I think I know this one. Uh, oh my god. What's it going to be? I'm excited. <laughs> Wait, Rich, you can't find it? Oh, you got it. It's the one with Nathan's, Nathan's face on it. It's got his face right there and the... I'm going to pay for that later, everyone. That's very helpful. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Oh, there, he's on. He got him. Hi, guys. 
think some of you are going to find this song pretty familiar. I recognize it. <laughs> Don't breathe too deep on the subway. The world's upside down, hurling through space. But take it from Kirk. Beauty survives. Take a breath and just close your eyes. Imagine living on the edge of the life, exploring space and enriching lives, preventing planetary genocide. But we can't forget the fight at home. Right now we're living in America at the start of the millennium. Set a tone. The ignorant cannot see, and the hateful refuse to hear. Yet I see hope for humankind to defeat the lies and fear. Defend the oppressed, fight for equal rights all around. Just open your eyes, and we're both. We're headed for discovery On the right side of history A bright future is calling me Take a breath and turn the page But it all depends on what we do And the right and very kind of view It's time to I hope you guys liked it. Oh. We love Nathan. We love Nathan. I, re so I, I recognize that song. I recognize that song. <laughs> I think I might have heard you sing it in the village one night somewhere. I, I like loved that. I was, I was like dancing. Yeah. That was cool. His neighbors must like put their ear up to the wall, you know. I was like, I will not sing any rent lyrics at Anthony, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Nathan did it for us. He did that was awesome. Uh, I, with that. Yes. But it's so uh I thought it was so incredible when he sent it to me that uh he came up with such perfect lyrics for what's happening yeah. today, yeah. connected it to Star Trek and everything, and yeah. yeah, is he is he in the room right now? Can you guys see if he's in there? I, I um, saw him. He's he's there. I will try. Okay. You, you want him? You want him up? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, it's it's a job. Job. Amy, it's a job. there. It's a job. <laughs> where are you? Where are you based? Uh, I'm in New York. I'm uh, oh, up in Washington Heights. Yeah. Cool. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm You're sitting welcome. here. I was kind of sweating and everything. I'm like, well, the Rent song that I just rewrote lyrics to is about to be played for Anthony. <laughs> so. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. No, it's fun. Thank you. It's fun. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Glad you guys liked it. Yeah. I love doing these things for Dan. Just like he said, he kind of just asks, like, can you rewrite song lyrics? And then he, of course, he's like, next week we're going to have Anthony rap here. I, what about one of these songs? <laughs> he was in a little musical. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's, it's something, Anthony, I've never told you. I am a secret rent head. At least, I think it was a secret. I'm not sure. Uh, I came into it late, but I have seen rent on Broadway combined more times than I've seen individual other shows all together. That's yeah. how much I love. I, I know every word to two soundtracks from Broadway, rent and wicked. And that's it. Otherwise, I don't know anything. I didn't. Wow. I don't have the gay Broadway card, but your show, I'm like, yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, I actually had a question for you guys. Uh, just kind of in the in the realm of things that you know, activism and all that. And you guys know that we're you know we're doing stuff for different charities and stuff. Do you guys have any charities that you're specifically um, or or that you work with a lot or that are, uh, that you? 
like I'm to actually that. trying to figure out I, where I want to devote most of my charitable work these days. For a while, I was on the board of a wonderful organization, organization called Friends Indeed, and uh, they were providing free counseling and support to anybody dealing with life-threatening illness. They really were born in the age of HIV and AIDS, but then realized the work they were doing in that arena applied to any kind of crisis, any kind of grief, you know, um, so I was very heavily involved, but they, we, they had to close their doors a couple years ago. Rent got, you know, rent in New York is just really high. Mm -hmm. So since then I've been, you know, I dabble here and there. I'm, I, I really like the work of GLSEN, which is the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Educators Network, the work they do for safe space in schools for, for queer people and uh, young people and teachers. I really like GLAD, the work that they do for visibility. I really like, um, yeah. Uh, you know, Black Lives Matter has certainly been very much in the forefront. And, and there's, and, you know, learning about this organization that Mary introduced us to tonight, you know, so my fiance, Ken and I, we've actually been talking about where do we want, where do we want to really funnel our biggest support? We, we gave to food banks this year in the, in the wake of COVID, you know, certainly in the big, that's a big need, you know, it's trying to figure out where the biggest need is and where the most efficient use of the funding could be. Yeah. I was the same. That's what I've been trying. I've been donating just personally to a lot of different places and trying to figure out which yeah. one is going to be the most helpful. Is <laughs> yeah. Something. What about you, Mary? Yeah. Do you have? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Tim, the link uh, a little bit too late. So he oh. missed. <laughs> Did you already cover this? <laughs> he missed the beginning. <laughs> I think, why don't you explain it a second time? Because you know what? It doesn't hurt for people to uh, hear it again. <laughs> yeah, there might be uh, other people who came in. Well, the the um this um National Queer and Trans Therapists of Color Network. Um, is um, really, really terrific. I would definitely recommend checking out their website. Um, they, um, I will, I'll read their, I'll read their vision again, because it is really great. It's, we envision a world where all people have access to healing resources rooted in social justice and liberation to recover from trauma, violence, and systemic oppression. We specifically acknowledge the harm and violence perpetuated by the medical industrial complex and actively work to both intervene directly on this system as well as create new systems of care for our communities. Um, I love that. That's that's amazing. Yeah, definitely. Their their website is very comprehensive and well laid out, easily navigatable. Um, but that's outside nice. of that, um, I also um, I I had I said when we talked about this earlier that mental health is just something that I'm very passionate about supporting because um, you know so much of this is about what is the long term. Um, and I also, I know that there's the Loveland Foundation, which is specifically focusing on um, uh, mental health and uh, therapy for uh, Black women and girls. And um, Black Girls Code is also a really great foundation um, that, um, you know, encourages young women, um, young Black women to um, get into coding. And they have a really awesome website as well to check out. I heard um, about this one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, really, really um, fun and exciting. I had a friend who uh, worked with them through another, I, that's where I first heard about it. And they had a really great experience um, uh, with, the, with the actual program, like in, in, in practice, you know, they saw it happening in real time, which is very exciting. Um, those are the main, there is, I, uh, there is a great link tree that was created um, for, the, in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement in like, again, this more long-term stuff. I, I had it in my bio on Instagram for a while and then there was some more immediate stuff I needed to put in there, but I'm gonna put it back. And they have just, it in mind if people yeah. want to look at it too. I can put my name in the, th in the thing as well. Yeah, yeah I have it in mind right now. That, it's an awesome resource. Yeah, because it's just, it's, it goes beyond, um, you know, there's a whole mental health section with a bunch of different websites and links. Um, and then just within that, they have a lot of, yeah, trans and queer um, specific, um, then just ac across the gamut. And then if it is like, yeah, the more within the current activism happening, supporting people immediately, there's stuff for that too. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to find the balance of where to support immediately and where to invest on the long term and figuring out, yeah, similarly, Anthony, I haven't quite decided where I would want to make a monthly donation or um, and beyond that, also investing in, I, I've become a Patreon of a really great um, publication, Film Days, that is dedicated to, um, I retweet them all the time now, they're really, really awesome, um, 
and they're about um, supporting uh, minoritized and marginalized voices um, across the board uh, when it comes to film reviews and critiques, um, which is, you know, like with any industry, we see uh, white supremacy infiltrate every, and the patriarchy infiltrate yep. everything. <laughs> yep. And uh, so uh, Carl, who's their um, uh, editor in chief, I I found I I met him through Twitter by he had I'm a big uh, Hayao Miyazaki Studio Ghibli uh, film fan, and he had written a really great article about Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which is one of my favorites. So I started following him, and then uh, he was posting out film days, and that's how I became acquainted with their publication. Um, but I'm really thrilled to be a Patreon for them because um, I'm getting to stretch my horizons. I'm not as good at, I, like, I, at watching movies as I should be, <laughs> so it's getting me to watch films that mm. aren't as commercial, um, that should be getting more exposure, and listening to reviews written by people who have the experiences of the people in the films. So that's one example that I'm currently supporting, but there are a lot of great publications out there doing the same thing. So that's another, you know, another section of the support that we yeah. can create. I also thought of Trevor Project. Trevor Project is another one. Oh, yes. That I didn't Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you and guys so much. And thank you thank again you. For, for playing my song. I thank really you. So much. It. it was thank awesome. You. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Take care. Love you, buddy. Thank you. Love you guys, too. Uh, you know, it's, uh, that brings up uh, uh, an interesting question, I think. Uh, Barry and Anthony, when you guys were cast on Star Trek, I mean, you had both been successful before, but after being cast on Star Trek, you became Star Trek successful. And so you, I mean, obviously now you totally know what that means. And one of the things that comes along with that is an incredible amount of influence over a lot of people. Um, can you guys talk about like how you, how you felt about that initially and how you're navigating the way to make the most of that? Because you're both very feeling conscious human beings who want to do the best, and you're the type of people who want to create the Roddenberry universe that we all want to live in. Can you talk about how you're navigating how best to do that, given your new status as Star Trek people? Well, I feel like, um, you know, rents happened before social media, but in, in ways, in, a, in many, there was still like the AOL chat rooms, um, <laughs> that being a part of that, prepared me for having a, some kind of platform because it was so, Brent was so popular and so influential. And I grew up also in the era of Michael Stipe being a pop star who tried to use his platform for good. And other actors were start, it was starting to become a thing that it wasn't just, you know, about being famous. It was about if you were famous, maybe you had an opportunity, if not an obligation to try to make the world a better place. So. And then I also met Larry Kramer and worked with him as a very young man. So I was around these people and influenced by these people who instilled in me the possibility, the opportunity, the idea that it could be an opportunity to, to, be, to have activism and artistry very linked. So when, yeah, when Trek came along, it was just a very, nat it felt very natural to me. And yeah, my, One. I don't remember the numbers of people I had following me on Twitter before and after. I really don't remember, but it certainly exploded afterwards. And I, yeah, I, I very consciously and, and make, yeah, an effort to use my Twitter to, sometimes I'm just talking about books I love and sometimes I'm just talking about cool, fun things and making jokes or whatever. But a lot of times I'm trying to shine a light. I'm trying to use it to shake, the, shake things up a little bit. Most recently I got very heavily into the response to J.K. Rowling's hideous <coughs> tweets and article and everything. I got really deep in that, you know. Um, you know, so that's that's a very recent example. You know, with, with what's been going on with Black Lives Matter, I mean, I've, I've been certainly supportive and ampli amplifying it, but I feel like I'm trying to be an ally there and not take up space. You know, not my voice is to be an ally and support and amplify, not to like pontificate on that. Um, you know what I mean? So that was, I've been doing that in terms of Black Lives Matter stuff. Um, but the rest, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll go to town on it. One day on set, I was, I, I, I posted, I, Mary mentioned this thing about visibility, or diversity and visibility and representation being really important very important to me. Um, 
they're, they're, the Wheel of Time series got announced, their cast got announced. I don't know if you remember this, the Amazon series based on the Robert Jordan books. And it was a very diverse cast. And I was like, I posted a picture, I retweeted a thing saying, this is really a great thing, mm -hmm. you know, and under, and as you can imagine, some, some diehard fans of those books got upset that they weren't just all white people because they think that they imagine in their heads that it's just white people in those books. That was one thing. It unleashed this whole world of Nazis, like unabashed Nazis. I was on set, like just scrolling through my feed of like people talking about white genocide with a straight face, like, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm willing to go, I'm willing to do all this to stick my neck out to, to stand for what's right. And it invites some of the, some of the nonsense that comes in is, is pretty wild to behold. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we are we are so glad that um, it, you, uh, we, I, I feel like a, a, a lot of the sentiments seem to be kind of sound a lot in terms of your acting community. I really do think that your acting community is actually quite unique. And one of the things that is very clear whenever Dan and I are watching uh, Discovery and kind of watching your performance is that it's very clear how much the cast cares about the show and cares about the production. And I really feel that they really understand what a unique opportunity that this is. I mean, like, you know, we, like, like, like Dan and I, you know, like, you know, like normally I would never picture myself like supporting some corporate franchise, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, like that's not the high list of my priorities in life. But at the same time, I think that this one is actually just particularly unique and, and deserves just a, a little bit more appreciation than the, than the other ones out there. And I can promise you that, thank you for that, but I promise you that our, our, our higher ups, our executive producers, our showrunners, 100% recognize the, the opportunity and responsibility they, they have as uh, creative people, not just creative people making art that's good, but also as people who can give jobs and opportunities to marginalized people, to tell stories, to cast in a, in a way that's, you know, pushing boundaries and barriers. They really do take that seriously. And they were doing that before it became more, you know, talked about and, and, and they were, they were ahead of the curve in ter terms of all of that. And that's really important and meaningful to all of us who are involved in it. We, we want very much for our show to push all those boundaries and, and the, the, to tell stories that include everyone. And they, they, were very Roddenberry. Roddenberry. they were very Roddenberry about your casting, yeah. which to me blew my mind because when you look at the world today, if you were to look hundreds of years into the future, the group of people that you have assembled, that they have assembled, is very representative of who will be. Let's face it, the ladies are starting to outnumber the gents. It's the truth. And whoop, the white whoop, people, it's about Anthony, time. <laughs> like, Anthony, thank God you and uh, I are. I want to talk about the male <laughs> genocide that you are instituting <laughs> against us. Seriously. 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 Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's something that I, in being a part of the franchise and the show overall is I have become so much more aware of how important the representation behind the scenes is, if not more so, because you can put anyone in a role, um, but if it's still being written by a cis white straight male, it's going to be their version of that story. Um, and I think there's so much room to pine when it comes to what does it mean to have that person in that role? How does that inform the way this character moves through the world and their past experiences? Um, and, you know, it doesn't mean that I need a six foot tall woman writing for me, although I think she's- That would be so nice. <laughs> but I mean, that would be great. Um, I she really could be short, it. that's fine. That should be fine. But it doesn't, it, I think what I'm hearing a lot too, and this has been part of the discussion with all the Black Lives Matter movement as well, is that, you know, they're saying like, hire Black writers. It doesn't, doesn't have to be for your Black show. It means right. that you are going to have a wealth of life experiences that will inform whatever narrative you're creating, whether it be science fiction or fantasy or a contemporary piece about people sitting at home eating cheese. I don't know. It's just that there are going to 
if you if you gather a group of people with different experiences you're going to get a more enriched story so that has been something that i have become deeply passionate about um and advocate for and want to um be able to embody in in my own creative endeavors and like i my vision in 10 years time my friend asked me like well, where what what do you see in 10 years and i was like i want to be running a production company where I'm able to help other people express their voices. And, you know, I obviously have specific um, passions of types of stories I want to be told, but I don't want to limit it to that. I think it's very important that the, 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 my, my dear friend, Aliza Pearl, who is a big awesome. Aliza, I love Aliza. When she was on the panel and I posted recently, I really liked how she said, um, diversity without inclusion is tokenism this this yeah. idea that the actual inclusion of listening to people not just putting people in rooms or right. casting people and then not writing stories that um, right. are you know um, are part of their experience so that's something that I'm very passionate about I'm grateful when in regards to your question about being a part of Trek I also you know I I, I am I, you know <laughs> very uh, uh, flattered that uh, yes I had I had just graduated from Juilliard and all that stuff but this was definitely like very different experience from anything I had, you know, um, I, and what I wanted to say was that having people like Anthony Wilson, Sonequa, the people who had been, had had platforms and knew how to articulate themselves within them. And um, I'm just so grateful that both on set and off, I was able to learn from them about how to be an activist. Um, and it's just, really, I, um, yeah, that's, I, 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 I think I, the fan, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I think the fandom is, yeah. I think the <laughs> fandom is just so grateful that that's something that you guys feel comfortable doing now. You know, just from have, hearing from, I mean, you know, I, I can't walk down the hall in Vegas without someone saying like, we need more women's panels. We need more women of color up there. We need, you know, there's no men of color hosting either. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an issue. And, um, oh, and, and one other thing is I accidentally misgendered Kira uh, up before and I said she instead of them. And that is a, a problem that I did and I am very sorry. And I am, I, that is something I am still learning no matter how many friends I have uh, who are non-binary. So I apologize for that. Yeah, I, I will say that Kira has an infinite amount of uh, patience because uh, we often, I often mix up uh, pronouns and thank you for your patience. <laughs> It'll it's still trying. Okay, it's all right. I just, uh, I just read Beyond the Gender Binary, which I highly recommend to everyone. It's really great. You can listen to it on audiobook as well. It's less than um, an hour long. It's really great um, articulation of a lot of those. Um, but for real though, raise your hand if you sat on your bed and ate cheese during quarantine. <laughs> vegan Anyone. cheese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheese, vegan cheese. Lots of Anthony's vegan. not raising his hand. I'm feeling like, you know, Sitting I'm in my bed like... eating cheese. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> also, uh, I do apologize. They're starting to set off fireworks um, right on my street. So uh, I'm going to keep myself muted. Don't talk to me about that. Yeah. <laughs> They're right outside my window. So. Going to mute myself. Well, I uh, I I just want to say, like Mary, with what you just said, you're no one would think that you're new to this. Like you do it so well and so seamlessly that it is just. I mean, it, I mean, Anthony, you it is something to behold. Like when you see Mary in a crowd of fans. I mean, it yeah. helps because she truly means it. She really means all these things, everybody. Yes. But she's so great at connecting with people and yes. making people feel as special as she is to them. Don't you think? I do. I've seen it happen. It's true. I have a picture of Mary from the cruise when everyone was introduced and she came out with the mic and she was yelling and clinging on and everyone on the boat was screaming and it was awesome. And it's just like a full, like a commitment to that kind of thing. And it's, it's just yep. wonderful. And your, your joy spreads throughout everyone then. And it's so lovely to, to see that and, and to be in, in the room when that, in the room where it happens. <laughs> well, I do. I mean, it's, it, thank you for saying that. I mean, but I'm glad that you know that it's it's genuine because I've spoken before to the fact that I did grow up a geeky kid and like loved my different franchises. And while I came to Trek later on, um, 
in when I did fully understand and embrace that world, it resonated because it made me think of the stories that I grew up with and how much I wanted the people involved to be to care as much. And yeah, just continuing to, in answer to your question about this platform is if I get to meet people from all over the world, all over the country, I, it's been amazing to travel the world, but it, to, to go to places, these smaller conventions throughout the country have been su such a gift. I grew up in LA, I was in New York for school. Um, I could easily have had a very, and then was in Toronto for the show, like very East Coast, West Coast, you know, mm -hmm experience and my mom's from the south like i've been i've been in the country but to be at these conventions with genuine fans um and really hear their stories and be present with them and um it's just been a huge gift particularly with the nature of how the world is right now there's a lot of a lot of tension a lot of conflict a lot of you know good bad binary which i think we need to get rid of uh, we need to start embracing the gray or um but i really really um am so grateful to be able to have those one-on-one -on -one experiences and let people feel seen and not that but it makes me feel seen as well to just to have a genuine human connection um and people just it's I, I love people and I'm grateful that that's what this has afforded me. Being a big scary Klingon has allowed me to have some really lovely, vulnerable, sweet moments with people. <laughs> and they get to see you without the makeup and they're like, oh my God, she's beautiful. Who put that makeup you know, on her? It's fun. <laughs> I, yeah, you mean not. you mean you didn't think Laurel was beautiful? What are you saying? Right. I know. I I agree. I think she is a stunning Klingon, personally. So, I'm glad you. she has hair now. Can I say that? I'm glad she has hair now. She rocks the hair. She does. Oh, I love the hair. Yeah. Yeah. They have totally. to sew that into my Klingon scalp. That was the fun. That's like they put they still put the full prosthetic on and then we had Sandy to come in and stick the wig on and like put these big Yeah. It's good stuff. You know what? Worth it. Worth it. Totally worth, worth it. Worth every stitch. Yeah. <laughs> Walt, cue up the next person. <laughs> sure. Um let's cue up Gemina. Ooh. Oh, oh. Gemina was super patient. Um Is so... Gemina from Finland? Jemina, Gemina, if, if my like emphasis is wrong, then I apologize. But um, you might have to unmute yourself. You might see a pop-up on your uh, computer. Yeah. If this, is, if this is who I think it is. Yes. Um, oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are, we, are, we are book club, we are book club uh, members on Goodreads. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's really great to talk to you finally. <laughs> you, you too, yeah. And you're in, you're in, you're in Finland. Yeah, I'm actually a bit nervous being the first foreign one here now. <laughs> Sorry for my accent. I don't no. usually talk so much with English. Uh, so right. obviously, both of you appreciate so much your work on Discovery. <laughs> Thank you. And had a question for Anthony, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not trick related, but you had a short story plan to come out next year in a collection mm. of these inclusive retellings of King Arthur Camelot lore. Um, is that project still ongoing or has it been halted by the current situation? Have you got any feedback for your first draft to be able to work on that during this all? Yeah, um, uh, thank you for asking. Yeah, this is, it's a, it was a really great opportunity. It actually came about directly because of Trek. At New York Comic Con, um, I met Swapna Krishna, who is a journalist, and um, I mean, she writes about space and NASA and Trek, and she writes for Sci-Fi Wire and I think IO9 and different websites. But um, she reached out to me and invited me to be a part of this anthology, and it's going to be modern. Well, it doesn't have to necessarily be modern, but it's like retellings or reimaginings of the Arth Arthurian legends. So anything dealing with King Arthur, mm -hmm. with uh, Gen, you could gender bend it, you could queerize it, you could people of color it, you could do anything, but the idea is like, you know, just sort of switch it up a little bit. So I did write a, a story um, uh, 
and I submitted the draft. I got some really good feedback from Swapna and her fellow editor. I wrote a, I took notes and I rewrote and sent the second draft and I'm waiting now for the second notes, second round of notes, but I'm pretty happy with where it is. And uh, I'm very, very honored to be a part of it. There's other great writers like Alexander Chi. I don't know if you're aware of him, he, he's involved. Um, there's, uh, uh, I can't think of the other names of the art. There's so there's like a a pretty cool list of authors, and so it's a really exciting thing. I wrote short stories when I was in high school. I hadn't written any fiction for many years. I wrote my book. Writing my book was really hard. It was a memoir, though, so it was a great challenge and a great opportunity to get to write something that wasn't just from my own personal experience. Although I will say that there are aspects of it that draw on some some pieces of my experience or people I knew or know that I sort of tried to honor with the a couple of the characters, a couple of situations. Very excited for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I, and it's, you. So yeah, it's, it's ongoing and I believe it's going to be still on schedule to be published, but I don't know for sure exactly when. Okay. It, yeah. I, I'm friends with her and we had work, we had written for the same website. Um, and when I, she oh, cool. posted that, um, I have my master's in lit and uh, I have a specialty in British literature and it was I was so pumped to see everybody was uh, involved in that project, especially um, because the tales of King Arthur are so hilariously white and that so many yeah. countries actually claim that King Arthur came from them, that people say he's French, he's Icelandic, yeah. he's yeah, yeah. he's British, he's Irish, he's all these things. And it, you know, it's, it's like a, a character that we can all kind of own under the right circumstances. And I think that yeah. that's really cool that you're part of that project. Thank you. I won't say which character. There's one specific character that I kind of center my story or having that character's presence in my story. Um, but uh, I, I was dire very directly inspired in ways I just we just read in our book club last year of Once and Future King. So there were there were pieces of the way that T.H. White told some aspects of the story that gave me some things that I built off of. So if, if anybody has read that version of the Arthurian legend, there are ways that he wrote some of the characters and ways that he talked about the dynamics between, you know, Guinevere, Arthur, and Lancelot that I kind of used as jumping off points. Oh, I'm excited. So. This is a good, a good little preview. <laughs> Thank you. As I remember, we also read Jonathan Strange, or what is it? Jonathan Norrell? Oh, Jonathan Strange yeah, and Mr. Norrell, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, <laughs> was that influence as well. I remember you mentioning that. Only in the sense of, yeah, that that was an influence Sorry. in the sense of thinking about that book. For those of you who haven't read it, it's really, it's really long. And But um, there are things in that book that talk about magic and how magic, perhaps, the idea that magic has a cost slash either has a cost or magic is certainly not all powerful. That, that magic has limits and so there were yeah. aspects of that that kind of inspired little pieces of what i was working on yeah that's great it was so naturally put in that book so it's yeah an influence. yeah thank you yeah. thank you so much yeah and nice, thank to, you nice for... to finally nice to finally meet you virtually <laughs> we've, been, we've been like talking about books for a couple of years now yeah, very yes. very extensively and if for people who are book nerds it's a really good community of people on goodreads the science fiction fantasy book club and making a real effort to pick titles that are you know as diverse as possible and you know yeah there's a lot of the regular canon that's referred to and is a part of it but also a lot of really progressive stuff and just some excellent moderators who create safe yeah. space and it's it's a yeah. very very strong community of people yeah i've noticed that compared to another community some good read that is exceptionally good one yeah <laughs> yes, yes. very well yeah. moderated yeah thank you for being thank such, you so much such an engaging pal and because this is my first and probably only chance to say for me to huge congratulations for ken and you for your engagement oh thank you <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate amazing it. news. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us and for, for probably stay. Oh, wait, am I? Okay, no. For probably staying up real late to be with us. Thank yeah, you so much. Really, uh, yes, really late. <laughs> yes. It's like, what, 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Yep. for you? Yep. Thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, but it's my usual rhythm, so. <laughs> I have to slow clap that. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you. It's, and did you pronounce it Yamina? Is it Yamina? Oh yeah, Yamina. Like, Yamina. Yes, Yamina. 
Good to know. Or Yampu is even better. Yeah, Yampu, Yampu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yemina is so gendered. <laughs> so yeah. I prefer Yampu. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yampu. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. So Take care. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, I'll queue up the next uh, video question. And uh, hey, Kira, how about you hit us with a, a text question? I see we got like 30 or 40 in there. Maybe we should maybe we should do a lightning round. Yeah. Kira, just just hit them with like one after the other. Like, what's the worst costume? How many times uh, do you have to pee in the day, wait. especially when you're wearing the suit? Like, just go, go, go. never. You sweat it all out. Wait. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, this. Hold on. There's a lot of yas and I know. I'm LOL. Like, the, honestly, the first question I, I saw was actually about me. So I was like, nope, not I can say something about one. peeing. I can say something about peeing that people might find funny is that because on film sets, everybody's on walkie-talkie, so they have code codes for like various things. So when an actor leaves set, they when wherever when an actor does anything, there's somebody on a walkie talkie going, they're they're over by Video Village. They're over by, they're always telling each other so they know where we are. So when you go pee, the code is ten one. So I'm like, I'm wow. gonna ten one. Ten one ten one. Yeah. So yeah. I think Jerry so Ryan mentioned Oh, I've got one. I don't know why I think I don't know if it's a military thing or what anyway. What yeah. Um this is a this should be a quick answer. Um, this is from Krista. Um, she asks, who in the cast is most likely to break or laugh in a scene first and cause others to laugh? <laughs> wow. Who would you say? Well, I, from, I have my, like, Mary, Mary <laughs> Wiseman. Yeah. Mary Wiseman, probably, I guess. I Feel free know. to throw anyone under the bus. We're all, it's all, yeah. we're all friends here. <laughs> We won't I, tell. I would say from on the Klingon side, all the with the is that I'm particularly during Point of Light in the second season, Ken and Shazad just made it their life goal to make me laugh. Like and just were so obnoxious in the best way. And particularly Ken is Colshaw, who was like creepy Santa. Like he'd go up and be like, What are you on for Christmas, little boy? And did the, it was and James McKinnon. I'm not supposed to move my mouth at all because it's just like, unless I'm in the scene, I should not be moving basically. And so I, I would have to do this thing where I would just be like, like moving around, not laughing while they're just being complete goofballs. Cause even with yeah. the close on mask, it's less nuanced. So like it, it, he could get away with more of that stuff. And um, so on the, on the Klingon side of things, that was definitely my experience. Um, but I cannot, uh, I, I'm not sure about the, uh, on the Federation side of things. So I will believe. I think it's probably, Ma I think it's Wiseman. Yeah. 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 She will certainly be the first to make, to goof off, to like goof <laughs> off slash break, probably. Yeah. But yeah. she's also, I don't mean to say like, she's also very serious. Oh, serious yeah. Actress and like hardworking and great, great yeah. ethic, you know. But yeah. she's got the yeah. goofy side for sure. Yeah. She enjoys it. As she yes. <laughs> And it clearly does not mess with her timing because she yeah. has the best, like, just precision timing in scenes. Yes. Like, yes. wow, she can begin a scene and end a scene. And it is, it is all about the beginning and the end there. She's amazing. <laughs> I had a wonderful yeah. conversation with her backstage at Star Trek Las Vegas. When you were talking earlier about diversity, um, one of the things that I hadn't really seen much of in Star Trek was body diversity mm. and seeing Mary uh, being a curvy tall lady such as myself <laughs> was very nice and refreshing and I had done a photo shoot for um, a really cool company called Valente Design and they designed Starfleet jackets and I was their Tilly body type and I got a whole mm. bunch of super fun people on Twitter telling me I was too fat for Starfleet. Yeah. And I said, I mentioned it to Mary backstage and I said, you know, she goes, you know what? I'm too fat for Starfleet, but I'm yeah. in Starfleet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, I just, I felt, I felt for her because obviously she's gotten a lot of that too. And, but it, it, you know, it's meaningful to hear, to see someone who represents, you know, not just one, like all the ladies of the, you know, the, the first, like four or five, five series are, are very petite and very slender and it's, it's not a very big difference. So it's very nice to see that and, and she's great. So I just have to join in the Mary is awesome chorus. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about Wiseman, but it's a great name overall. I definitely support that. 
Um, but that has been something that, yeah, I, I mean, celebrating too, yeah, being tall and curvy is just something that um, has not been seen as much. And I think that it's really important that that is seen and celebrated. And like, and I know we've talked about this too, Amy, just like uh, with our, our beloved Gwendolyn Christie, like that, that- My girl, my girl! Size, <laughs> because I think there's a limitation put on women to like to diminish in whatever form whether they're tall or like this idea of of just like a diminishment of energy so i say for me it, it, i i happen to be tall but i have a big energy and so it's just like if that can be you know that's the message is like everyone's energies should not be withheld mm -hmm. or made fun of because they're enthusiastic yes i think for you it's it's been a huge benefit because you have that that presence that you that you need as a Klingon woman and I think that's you know and having met some of the other actresses who had played Klingon women it's you know I'm always taller when I meet people that I admire I'm always yeah. much taller and then to meet you I was like I have to look up a little bit it's quite nice <laughs> yeah totally you know me I love my big boots I wear my like five inch boots all the time because they're awesome and if yeah yeah well <laughs> we'll call tirade but i will say that tired yeah, about boots i want to do something real quick would you guys like to help one of our visitors win a fabulous prize yeah how do we do that yes. yeah all right so here's what we're going to do everybody who's in the room right now put your hands down don't raise your hands until after we're going to show a clip from the show and then after the clip i'm going to ask a question after I ask the question, you can raise your hand. Now, the question is going to go to Anthony first. And if he can answer it for you, you win. If he can't answer it, you have a chance to jump in with the answer. Cool? And by the way, Anthony, the prize is something I'm going to send you that I need you to sign for them. Is that okay? Not put me on the spot or anything. No, uh, not sure. He's going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rich. Cue up the first trivia question. <laughs> Again, with Mary and the closing of a scene. Brilliant genius. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, the first time the term gay was ever uttered on Star Trek. It had oh, yeah. never been said before. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's the question. Uh, now, uh, Wolf, you're going to have to be the one to choose who the uh, person is. Let's see who you're playing for, Anthony. I'm going to channel my inner uh, game show host here. Who are you playing for? Wolf, who is he playing for? Uh, okay, so let's... Well, okay, so, well, going up and down, up and down. They keep on putting their hands up, then they keep on putting their, their hands up. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, buddy, <laughs> buddy, it's up to you. Yeah. All right, so Mar uh, Mariah Gossett, Mariah Gossett. Oh, uh, Mariah okay. Gossett. Mariah Gossett from the start, from the, from the podcast. So I will promote Mariah. You, have, you, have you listened or watched the podcast? There's one of the Star Trek Discovery podcasts. There's Mariah's no, on that know. podcast. Hi, Mariah. Hey. Hi. That's awesome. Oh, fantastic. You're, All right, well. You're, you're very yeah. quiet. Oh, I can turn up my mic. I have that yeah. ability as a podcaster. How's that? <laughs> oh, that's a little excellent. better. Yeah. Better. Okay. That's awesome. Well, Thank Anthony, you. now that you know who it is, you're really on the spot. I really want. I really want it to work. I want this to happen. <laughs> okay. So, who was Dr. Colbert actually looking for when he entered the scene? Cornwell, Admiral Cornwell. There you go. See how easy this is. Jason Space wants everyone to be happy. So, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Everyone wants to say do this. Thank you. Can I say something about that scene? Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Yeoh is an amazing human being. I was such a super fan before she got on the show. But until that point, I'd never acted in a scene. I'd never had dialogue exchange with her. So that was a particularly thrilling and meaningful day for me, that I got to have actual, I got to play with her, play off of her. It was really, really, really special. She's mm -hmm. such a she's such an amazing person, such a superstar. I talk about and using her platform and her superstardom to make a difference in the world. She's been doing that for years and years and years. She's just such a shining example of 
of what it means to be a superstar and, and use your power for good. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that. That's awesome. Well, that, yeah, don't I, be so binary. I, I, I yeah. yeah, don't be so binary. There it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's incredible. Yeah, and, and, and again, that scene meant so much to all of us who were watching. The first time we were called by name, it just, I mean, for me, I did a double take. I was like, hang on, not, wait, is that, wait, why is that hitting my ear wrong? Oh, because it's coming out of Star Trek. <laughs> never come out of Star Trek before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You just keep blazing trails, man. <laughs> blazing trails. Kind of well, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, I am going to... Uh, uh, send us a message. We're going to get your your uh, mailing address, and we're going to send you a really, really cool Stamets Gaze in Space canvas, which I've been You're working right. on. Oh, cool. You're, you're in Austin, right? Yeah, I'm in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I just was part of a big movement, um, a Twitter campaign to raise, we raised over a million dollars for Texas, to turn Texas blue, so... Oh yes, we're sending we're sending energy that way. Mm -hmm. please, sending energy please, to Texas. Please turn this petri dish of a state blue. I'd really <laughs> yes, <laughs> try it and stay safe down there. Thank yeah. You. Let me just Bananas. say that I think that Anthony's memory is like fascinating. How he knows all his fans, where they all live. Oh, you know his book club with him. It's just it's just it's really like oh yeah, I know you and you and you and you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually really like fascinating. So. Thank you. Say hi to the gang. Say hi to the podcast gang for me. I will. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and your patronage. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Mariah. Yeah, awesome. Yay. Uh, cool. Do we have another video question queued up? Great. Hit it. And then we're coming back with a trivia question for Mary. So Mary, get ready. Because you know I wasn't going to leave you out. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but it'll be great. <laughs> uh, wait, we're going to, uh, no, wait, babe, no, wait, 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 no, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Rich, not yet. Oh, my God, we're all, all right, I'm gonna being research. destroyed here. You guys are in, Rich is in so much trouble tonight. <laughs> I saw some D7s. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you can not only identify that, but the fact that you probably know exactly what I'm gonna ask you, just based on knowing the entry to the scene. I'm, I'm oh, not I sure. I, this, <laughs> these, the, the, these sort of like question things are actually where I get the most nervous. Like, cause I'm just convinced oh. I'm gonna, so it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. And you won't, and you know what, since Rich already messed it up, but because uh, we love him and it's amazing, we're gonna go with it. Rich, play okay. that scene. Let's go for it, okay. So scared of you when you're not you. When you're <laughs> badass. badass. Oh my God. Like badass, badass, uh, badass. Badass. Also, this, this feels like the right moment to bring up this. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. My good cardboard cutout. This is, it's, you know, the comics, they base uh, their drawings off of the different outfits and images from the show. So they did base that off of this um, final warrior woman outfit, which I really love. Huge shout out to the incredible Gersha Phillips. Yes. Okay. So you look so amazing. Someone on one of the Facebook posts about tonight, someone mentioned how amazing your costume is in the, you know, the banner that I made with you guys for Days in Space yes. for tonight. That particular one, they were like, oh my God, so great. I was like, yeah, she's fierce in fighting and fashion. Duh. Like, why do you think we love her so Mother <laughs> is our mother. Come on. You know, you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta do it. You gotta go full, go hard or go home, as they say, or go to Exactly. Conference. Exactly. <laughs> you cannot half-ass a Klingon. Hell no. 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 <gasps> but that, I will say, yeah, I mean, every outfit I had in the uh, second season was in incredible. Um, but I, I think that one, just because it was, it was that warrior woman archetype. It, there was a, t uh, there was a, a TNG element, uh, like Klingons that, you know, it, there was just the whole setting. 
felt like this great kind of meeting um, of worlds and every experience. I mean, I can't celebrate Gersha enough and her entire incredible team, um, but they took so much t time to, to fit, like talking about body, like they made these couture dresses for my body type. And plus oh. I had some prosthetic on top half the time they had to compensate for these prosthetic bubbies. Um, and, uh, but they did such a brilliant job of really making them so, you know, epic and beautiful and a badass. So um, just really grateful for that. But I, I think that one's my, maybe my, my favorite out of all of them. I, the black and red one's a close second. <laughs> I mean, in, in the first season, it was very functional. It was, if I need to kill people, this is what I'm wearing. I'm going to kill them. Like, if I trip, I might take out their eye accidentally just on what I'm wearing. Yeah. But second season, it is the regal, I'm in charge, but I can still kick ass when I need to. Like, do not let any of this fool you. I, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's beautiful what they did, and you just you inhabit it so well that it's like, well, yeah, that's what you've been doing. That you know what? Yeah. Well, thank you. I I, I loved I loved wearing all of them very much. <laughs> did you get to keep any of them? Probably no, Although, right? Although I honestly would wear some of them like on a carpet if I could, and like I would that copper dress, hundred percent with the cleavage. Mm. And like, I'd love to try it out without the, the prosthetic on. Like, I think it would um, be really fun to play with. Well, and if I it goes it. missing, we, we yeah, know yeah, what I happened. Know. I ratted myself out. Now I can't get away. <laughs> um, but I did on the, the most recent cruise, um, Jim was on the ship. And so he did do me up in full the prosthetic. And they then had th that, that outfit. Uh, shipped over. I mean, bless them That's all cool. at Star Trek. John Ben Sitters and the whole team. They, um, yeah, suited me up and um, all of that. I mean, it was it was incredible that they were able to make that happen. The cruise. I mean, contact. and people got to take photos with you, mm -hmm. all dressed yeah. up. Yeah, it was free. And then I ended up doing a whole uh, about thirty minute improvisation as Laurel in the Klingon bar. Kapla. Uh, didn't anticipate doing that, but it happened because I was in the full outfit and we were walking over to take some pictures and I'm, I'm me. So I'm like, well, I can't not be Laurel right now. And so I started like yelling at people and then I got in the <laughs> bar and like, cause there were like, it was like midday or like later afternoon. So people were kind of in the bar, but not that many. And I was just like, what are you drinking? And I did this whole thing. And then it became, I was in the center of the bar and people were asking questions. And I was very candid about my experience as a female leader. It was great. It was, it was, it was really fun. It was yeah, fun. I, I had no idea it was happening. And you walked past me and you yelled at me. And I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> Why did she hate me? What? You look so amazing, and you were the character. I mean, that's another thing that the cruise does so well. When you guys go into the full makeup, because like you say, they don't have that. They bring in the real makeup, the real artists, the real costumes. It is as though you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Laurel, which, trust me, you don't want to do that. Just, <laughs> Ah, uh, she's a teddy bear. She's a pushover. Softy, softy on the inside. You, you just say that, Anthony, because you know when she ten one. That's the only reason you say that. I will. This brings up another. Now we're. I'm. To, but this brings up a memory of in the for the fourth episode. Um, Anthony and um. Ken, his now fiance, um, came and visited the set when we were filming one of the final scenes uh, between Boca and Laurel. Um, and so I'll remember that moment always, yeah. just because it was, it was very like, sweet. we were fully suited up and we were in our, yep. we are like, hey, we're like, hey, we're just doing the yes. thing. <laughs> just yes. on. Hey, Dan, are we going to get to see Kira sing? Wait, you, yeah. wait, you gotta do the question in the, in the contest. Uh, I, okay. Here, let me do the question real quick, and then yes, absolutely, Kira. Uh, I'm just gonna have to say, get going, we, it's 10. And, <laughs> you have to go. When, uh, when we play Kira's thing, everybody just lower your volume a little. I don't know why our levels are so hot. My apologies. Uh, okay, so question. Uh, 
wall, you're going to pick somebody real fast, no equivocation. Who is it? Now, do it. The winner uh, right now is Judd Matos. You will see a box uh, probably pop up. You want to you have to unmute yourself. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, Mary, I hope you can answer this question because at this point, I've forgotten what the question was. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> what does Laurel proclaim she will wave her way through at the end of the scene? Through the remains of our, en our enemies. Oh my God, yes! <laughs> Um, question mark? Question mark? <laughs> enemies. <laughs> but yeah, the ruin of our enemies. The ruin of our enemies. There the we go. Ruin of, well done. There we go. It was. Hey. Uh, hey. I didn't mean uh, to bring my baby into this, but um, oh. you know, this is my daughter, Lisa. Hi. She's actually named after Kieran Reese. Oh. So, no, me um, too. Mary, you actually wished me a happy Father's Day thanks to my wife on Cameo and you sang um, yeah. our sons and daughters from DS9. And my my daughter, this, this tired little bouncy baby, yeah. was just bouncing up and down. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Remember that? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Do you remember me, this crazy Klingon lady? <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is adorable. Oh, she's really, hi. But, you know, this time the little girl's brought honor to this house, you know? Oh, yes, um, absolutely. I, like I wanted to say, before, to ask, say, first off, thank you guys so much for this. This is just great to be able to do this. Thank you. Um, as a bi, half black, half Jewish Star Trek nerd, who grew up with Star Trek, grew up with TNG and DS9 and everything all the way through. Um, Star Trek's a part of my family, you know? Yes, my daughter and my wife and my dad, when he was still around, loved Star Trek, you know? So I was, at, I was wondering, what's something that resonates with you guys? Like Cisco in DS9. Yeah. Cisco in DS9 resonated with me. You know, just seeing Jake and his dad out there, and you know, I, my dad raised me, so to see dad out there in space raising his kid, and that, you know, I don't joke go to religion when I want something to feed my soul. I go to Star Trek, mm -hmm. you know. So like, what if, what what hits you guys? You know, like you guys have been watching, and you know, now you're a part of this. I mean. Anthony, what, what's your go-to, you know, thing? Or you just look at me and say, that's right, I'm Paul Stamets, baby, what's up? <laughs> um, I always I always really responded to Spock and Data, especially, and, and then Odo and DS9, the, the outsiders, you know, the, the people looking yeah. for a way to kind of, like, they're out, like, you know, I've always felt a little bit outside, outsider myself to some degree, and so I identify with it. But also, they're, they're the incredible work of the actors that brought those characters to life with such yeah. such hum such complexity humanity intelligence so that's yeah. those are those are the things that i have always really keyed into yeah thank you yeah sure also, um, awesome. I, I've, made, I've made a bunch of um rent related jokes at your expense but my wife got me turned on the rent when i first met her so oh, cool. thank you for, <laughs> sure. you know yeah 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 you guys but, She's so cute. Oh, you're just so, so present cute. and awake. She's just, oh my gosh. Hi. Awesome. She's been awake through this whole thing, wondering when daddy was going to ask his question. <laughs> and now she's just like, I know all of you guys. Hi. <laughs> cool. um, no. I, would, I would say that I, I, I really, uh, really love D Space Nine and um, at Kira and Dax were particularly. Um, resonant with me um i think i, I love Deep space nine too i've got this <laughs> so i really um i've been wanting to do a full rewatch um but i just think that they were so ahead of their time with those characters oh, yeah. and uh or yeah i don't want to always saying ahead of one's time what does that mean but um they were of of the time and pushing the time and doing all the good stuff but i really um I'm a huge fan of um, Nana and Terry as well. Um, and I just love uh, what they 
got to do with those characters. And, yeah. Um, and thank then, you guys for taking the time. Um, thank you for getting to let me ask some. I guess thank you for letting my daughter make her very first uh, Star Trek Jason Space Zoom call with everybody. You all wait for the nice people, sweetie. Nice to meet what you. Judd, what does Judd win? Do I win yeah, something? Yeah, don't, don't leave. I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm not going to, like, push you out. Stay, because Dan wants to ask a question. So Look, this is, this is okay. Uh, first, well, first off, I, uh, I Walt, speak. Walt, you have to get the info so we can send him the prize. Okay. Oh. okay. Uh, but, Judd, thank you so much for being yeah. with us, for sticking with us, and, oh, my God, you have such a beautiful child. Like, yeah, wow. I know. I, she, she's, she's gonna charm everybody's pants off, and she's gonna be the biggest nerd. And I, I swear to you, true story. Shortly before she was born, what does she do? Like after she was born, she does that as a baby. And I'm like, oh, uh, we picked the right name for this kid. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Death nice and to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you, you so both. Much, Thank you. Yeah. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. You. Hi. Oh my God, Rich! We need to have babies. We have to have babies, Rich. I'm not gonna lose my figure, so get ready. So yeah, we'll, we, this is a great time to have that discussion, babe. All right. Here we go. I have a quick Play question. I have a quick question before Anthony leaves. Anthony, are you coronavirus wedding planning with Ken? Well, we, I mean, uh, yes and no, it's, it's on hold. So yeah, yeah. You're yes. gonna, you know, it'll yes be, no. it'll be awesome and fabulous. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> it, yes. When it's safe to do so. Yes. Awesome. Don't go anywhere, Anthony. Play Kira right now. New Trek, there's New Trek on TV, New Trek, for all of us to see, New Trek, it started with Discovery, it's season 2, now season 3, it's blowing up, New Trek, New Trek, New Trek, Discovery is bold, New Trek, and New Tech to behold, New Trek, the ship is filled with scientists, explorers, no one's seeing, Lorca's horrors, what's impossibly in store for us, New Trek, this new trick isn't like the old, how did they make this happen? We follow the first officer and not the starship's captain. Burnham is a mutineer, that's how the series starts. Now someone tell me why we love this crew with all our hearts. Oh look, new trick, a gay couple exists. They kiss and queer fans all rejoice. High five, Colbert is a doctor and his partner Stam is hooked up to the spore drive. New trick. New trick in here. We're in the mirror verse. How weird. This place is very dark. But why? They've loaded it with tiny little truths, just like the agonizer boots. There's evil smiles on every face, a polar opposite disgrace. This cosplay spun, the cosplay spun. Can't wait to wear it next year's con. New trick. Oh my, what now? We got section 31. Say what? It's covert but looks fun. No rules. An empress from another universe, or what's worse, Leland out to take control is Tyler Klingon or a human. New trick! Klingons have a redesign and space mushrooms are real. Tilly has anxiety, a lot of us can feel. Spock's gone missing, yet again we fear the Red Angels. Her mom, Disco's launching to the future. Don't tell me I should stay calm. The show's entwined, they're everywhere and all. Online, another streaming site for us. I've noticed Star Trek's Twitter timeline's blowing up. It's all access and Disney Plus. I want it, oh I want it, oh I want it for my own. I must binge it, I must binge it, I must binge this brand new show. It's new trick. Wow. That was so wow. great. Fantastic. I love awesome. it. <laughs> Thank you. So great. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I do have to get going. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anthony. Bye, Anthony. Thank you.
Thank Anthony, you. You're amazing. Long and Thank you so much. Thank you, we'll Mary. See you soon. Take care. No, Mary's staying. Oh, Mary, is Mary oh, yeah. leaving too? I'm no. I mean, if you'll have it. <laughs> Mary, yeah, She's like, you I'm stick here. Around for yeah, happy to stick around. Yeah. I'm on oh, West Coast so time. Much. Yeah, it's only seven there. Time yeah. zones are weird. Yeah. And and yeah. the great thing is, you know what? Since we've started, uh, we have maintained pretty much our entire initial audience. Woo! And for Zoom, baby, come on. Yeah. Woo yeah so let, let's bring somebody in for another question. Mary, we love you so much. Okay, another question. Here we go. Oh, you want me to bring someone up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. cool. Uh, do, you while we're, um, do you want to take take the honor? We'll pass it off. While uh, while they're bringing someone in, um, Mary, uh, next time you and Dan are together, or next time if you're on the cruise or anything like that, um, you have to invite Dan to do improv with you because oh, yes. every time he sees improv, he's just like, "Oh, I wish I could do that." <laughs> so well, he's just like digging his feet. Yeah. So just, uh, just it, it, as a nice little boyfriend ask if, um, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now I'm fully informed. I will definitely recruit. Um, okay. Yeah, well, it's actually, you know, that, oh. well, well we you, brought in I two mean, people. With, your, with, your, uh, with the stuff you're doing in theater in, in New York, Mary, if you ever need something to warm up the crowd, like I said, oh, yeah. occasionally funny. Yeah. Occasionally funny. And, Often, often, often fun. <laughs> so I brought in what I thought was one person, and then no, I brought in Debbie because you okay, asked okay. me to bring someone in, and I said sure, <laughs> and then yeah. you whole party now. Oh man, I okay. Well, you know, I brought in I, Debbie because I know okay. Debbie. Oh, only because they jump around a lot, so there's times when I when I get a click on it and it just like moves down. I go, oh no, but all right, cool. Okay, so at least we'll we, 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 we got to figure it out. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi, Dan. Miss you out here in the West Coast. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Amy. Debbie's awesome, you guys. <laughs> I, uh, I'm the um, admin for the Golden Gateway team way over here by San Francisco. Oh, cool. A very nice painting in the background. Why, thank you. I <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Debbie is a math teacher, and she's smarter than all of us. Cool. It's true. It's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> we're all nerds in our own special way yes yes i i we are all we are all yeah nerds and think i, I like to think we're creative thinking nerds that it, it whatever we if we can find what we're passionate about or there and often there are many things but just finding that that sweet spot of what gets us excited and really diving in that's that's what makes the world so great is that we all find different things that we love and thank goodness we don't all have the same exact uh, <laughs> strengths and passions it's like much yeah. more exciting. it was lovely meeting you on the cruise um i'm sure you met a bunch yeah. of people but we were at we were at the uh <clears throat> the klingon rave Yes, the neon lights. Woo! Yes, that was awesome. So that much fun. Cool. We had our glow paint and all that. That was fun. So so great. Yeah. What we went till like I, two two a.m. I couldn't <laughs> handle it. Yes. I don't know how late it went. Oops. Yeah. I don't. Know. <laughs> very very fun. Did, uh, okay. But I do remember at that event. And uh, I forget exactly who it was, but one of the gays in space, I forget who it was, but one of the gays in space was like, I'm not going to get painted. And then you came over with the paint and he was like, hell yeah. I, was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know who it was. It was Joe, the one straight guy in our group. Of course, that makes sense. Well, yeah. I, I roomed with Joe and I did not realize that Joe was a straight man. Um, I thought I was rooming with two gay guys in Melissa and I th and I was literally like just getting changed in front of Joe and I was like, oh, I'm not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's Dan's that fault. Was, <laughs> no, no, that was Rich's job. That was Rich's job. <laughs> Look at you blaming Rich. You are in so much trouble tonight, Dan. You're in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I'll have the baby. 
Sorry, Debbie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, was there a specific, any, any Is there a question on the floor? Yeah, what's the, what's oh, the we, trivia? Oh, uh, you have one. Or do you have one? Oh, okay. no, I, I thought Debbie had a question for Mary. Um, that wasn't my original plan. I thought we were doing trivia. <laughs> Oh, we can do that too. Rich, you up the next one. You see how we move and flow here? <laughs> and then Seb too, I don't know. Hi. Hi. Do you have a, a question? Uh, uh, yeah, I sort of had something to say, you mm -hmm. know. Also, you mentioned that you like Ghibli films. I have a calcifer tattoo. <laughs> I, I love, love it. I love that. Calcifer is one of my favorites. Oh, I love House Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just curious, like, how do you guys feel about, Star Trek's always been, like, touted as a really inclusive show from the beginning, but then there's also the other side of fans that, like, absolutely hate that for some, I don't know why they watch it, because they yeah. clearly hate it, but um, what do you think about people that sort of say things like, oh, it's just virtue sibling to have black people on the show, or to have, you know, Asian people on the show, gay people on the show, I'm obviously transgender and non-binary um but it people were asking for a they them character a while ago and i saw a lot of replies to that sorry i'm really nervous <laughs> a lot of replies to that w that were really negative and you know it, it's there's been a lot of talk about it and my mom and dad i know my mom one of the things i really think about her saying a long time ago she's got better is when she saw a gay couple kissing on a show oh that's disgusting and i was like oh, okay that's that's the thing Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's changed the face of TV in a lot of ways. And how do you think that's going to continue going forward? Did it, you know, Anthony said earlier that the creators do really care. And mm -hmm. I'm really glad to hear that. But what do you think about the fans that might try to push it in another direction, things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. Thank you for sharing all of that and, and your experience. I, um, I think with Trek, it is, I agree, it's very it's silly for anyone to claim to be a Star Trek fan and not think about all of humanity. Like, it's, it's I believe it's completely contradictory to exactly what, uh, there's that great uh, quote that I'm going to misquote, but uh, from Roddenberry about celebrating differences or that, that there's a, the, the joy in, everyone's unique quality which i really love that it's not just about everything's neutralized it's about yeah. the fact that everyone ha it has the right to express themselves in the way that feels authentic to them and um i agree uh the infinite diversity and infinite co infinite combinations we still have work to do there are still luckily as there it is at a time of expansion in the storytelling that there are so many opportunities to um, bring more characters, non-binary characters, bring uh, certain ethnicities that haven't been represented enough within the franchise. Like as, as you noted, like, you know, Anthony and Wilson are our first gay couple and that was 20, what, 17 when that aired. Um, so there's- Way still, too long, way yeah, too long. long. And I think we're moving past the like, what's a gift of track is that it is metaphor for you know people end up identifying with and playing an alien that definitely resonated with me as someone who never felt completely confined to like whatever this <laughs> world is trying to tell me to be um so i feel like that's part of how the show has always lent itself to everyone but i think now we are moving further in a better direction of letting that representation be more all-encompassing into the experience, the human experience we have on earth um, and making sure that those human experiences are expressed directly and clearly to the audience so that these conversations can be had and hopefully more people's minds um, can be changed once they see um, I know if Anthony were here, he would speak to the toothbrushing scene um, about how he and Wilson appreciated that so much because um, it was about the normalcy of it. And um, that's something that I, Shonda Rhimes uses the word normalization, like even not using the word diversify, but to normal, uh, normalize, which is saying that this is the normal world. This is our human experience. Um, it's not about, oh, we're doing this because it's a one-time unique thing. It's like, th these are who people are. Um, and I hope that that is 
what continues to happen within the franchise. I, I would like to believe it is. Um, and uh, I think luckily globally and in, within the industry beyond Trek, the industry is becoming more cognizant of this. Um, and I hope that Trek will continue to be a trailblazer um, in that regard. Um, but yeah, I, I really, sorry, sorry. Oh, go, no, please go ahead. I was just going to say, I really appreciate it that they chose to give Spock a, a learning disability or a learning disorder during the series. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are unhappy about that as well. Like, oh, you can't just change canon like that. But I think that's looking back at all Trek. canon. The problems. canon is just, canon is just a <laughs> word people use when they don't like something. Canon, look, look what's canon with Klingons. They were black. They were dudes in blackface. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And so it's like, there's yeah. no canon. But, but also, how would we have known that Spock was dyslexic? Like, it is entirely possible that he was. It is also entirely possible that he had a, a, a foster sister named yeah. Michael Burnham, who we now can never speak of again for the betterment of yeah. all sentient civilizations. It yeah. makes yeah. I mean, Spock's well-known in character for just, like, holding holding back information unless it's truly necessary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Who <laughs> has a brother and a, and a princess? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. uh, that mother? Like, yeah. That's crazy. Exactly right, Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, and I do agree about, um, and how that is part of how he was able to be more in tune with the Red Angel and, like, that it, that, I, yeah, I, I agree. I thought that was a really, um, wonderful addition and i'm a i'm always a big fan of a prequel you were talking about earlier about wicked that was we'll, we'll talk later about that <laughs> but, um just saying but, i had a wicked parody that i sang a couple weeks ago and it was awesome because wicked oh. is my second favorite show after rent oh, there we go. <laughs> we're definitely all gonna have to talk about that. it was called the captain and i not it's not really really, really good mary. mary you okay. have to see it you have to okay see it. i definitely not too late can i throw down a question Oh, okay. sure. I, I just, I wanted to touch ah. one more thing from Seb's question, and then yes, absolutely. I just wanted, in regards to responding more specifically to fans when they say that, and I know that uh, Star Trek.com and the Star Trek handle recently released a statement about how that they are going to be actively um, um, combating uh, hate speech on their pages, which I am very, very grateful to hear. You know, that's something that it's about time. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> it, it, it needs to be dealt with. And I think with Trek, you know, there's, it's not right in any of these major franchises for that sort of um, hatred to be expressed. But I think with Trek, it's just completely incongruous with yeah. what it stands for. And um, truly, I, 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 one thing I say is like, perhaps those fans just take the more problematic stuff that we acknowledge as a Trek community and, and for, latch on to that <laughs> and then decide that everything else that this show was really moving towards um, is, is, is not right. And I just think that's, it's very strange and unfortunate. And I am of the mentality while, you know, it's, Sometimes we gotta block people. Sometimes we have to, whether that be literally in our lives or on the internet. Um, but I'd like to think that there are people that are reachable. Um, that you know, it's not all about us having to sacrifice ourselves or our time and energy to try and change someone's mind. Um, but I hope that the art being expressed, that certain shows, certain characters that already exist and will continue to exist in the various new shows coming out, will help people start to understand their own prejudices more and will hopefully allow them to be um, better Trek fans, um, be, you know, stronger allies. And um, I, I feel like I was speaking earlier about my convention experiences. What's been heartening about going to various places in places in the country and, and the globe is that I'm like, people all around the world do believe in this. There are enough people. I think there are more people that have a have a strong sense of of justice and equality um so i'd like to think that that will be um where we continue to head um so yeah and i'm i'm just doing my best to be my part and i'm learning how to be more um 
active and articulate when appropriate, how to be the right type of ally, how to be the right type of advocate. Um, and I think if we all can take it upon ourselves to do that um, in small and larger ways, that's gonna be the best way to move forward. But it, it gets me angry when I see that stuff. <laughs> but I, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I just wanna say to Seb, the way you love Star Trek is completely important and completely valid. And the way you be, you're in this community, you know, you're part of this family. I hope yeah. that means something good to you. And I hope that means, you know, we're all here for your experience. And I'm sure it's tough with your, with your parents and with your family. And I've gone through that with family and friends and, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you're an awesome person. You're an awesome yeah. Trekkie. Don't, you know, don't listen to anybody who's like telling you otherwise, because that's, that's, <laughs> ugh. They're dealing with their own stuff. Yeah, they they got yeah. their own problems, man. You do you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. And uh, Seb, as we've been talking, I've already been putting together the Gaze in Space swag bag care package to send to you. So really? stick around. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Like, listen, talk to me and tell me you're one of the true believers, and I will give you this shirt. <laughs> That's why I do this. Like, I do this so that, yes, of course, I love chatting with Mary. Mary's amazing. She's a beautiful person. And, oh, my God, looks so great on Zoom. But aside <laughs> from that, the reason I do it is so that I can meet people like you. So where are you from, if uh, you don't I'm mind my UK. asking? I'm in the UK right now. I'm... You're in the UK. Okay. You and I would never have met <laughs> yeah. were it not for this. And... I think that is amazing. I think it's absolutely amazing. And if there is anything that I can take from my experience to make yours better, oh my God, that's the greatest day I could possibly have. Because exactly what Amy said, you're a love. You're amazing. You get it. You're a trekkie. Like anybody who doesn't get that, pity them. Pay attention to us. Because we also get it, and we love you. So please don't go anywhere. We need your info so we can send you some stuff, okay? Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah. thank you to Mary and Amy and everyone else as well. Thanks. Thank you, Seb. Uh, it's late there. Get some rest. <laughs> I, I, lots of sleeping pattern. I don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Seb. Uh, okay, wait. Debbie, did you have a question? Or are you now Ooh. ready for the trivia? Because oh. we got the trivia queued up. Well, I love trivia, as my Friday night gang knows, because I wrote a couple of trivia games for last night. But <clears throat> just real fast on the sex yeah. topic, because as a teacher, that's terribly important to me. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody at my school knows I'm the resident Star Trek fan. But the important thing is um, I teach all my students the meaning of um, itic and I wear one at school all the time and I explain it to them. And on my classroom wall, I have that quote you were talking about, Mary. It's mm -hmm. printed on my board because, uh, and I, I can't quote it, recitely, recite it exactly, but it's something like, um, it's not just enough for us to tolerate each other's difference. We need to delight in them mm -hmm. and enjoy each other. And uh, that's on my board and my kids see that every day. It's a shame I didn't memorize it, but. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. We all got we all got COVID like stay at home all the time. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah. yeah, that was what I was just going to ask. Is that I have some friends suffering with depression because of the COVID, and it just the symptoms come back for a lot of folks. And I was just curious how people are finding some joy in all this weirdness. Yeah. Well, that I, and I'm glad because yeah, the the delight. Uh, I remember that was the that word, and I think it's so important and a huge theme. Um, that has come up, particularly as I've been activated in the past month, um, particularly with the Black Lives Matter movement, is a lot of the literature I've been reading has talked so much about how it is about the acknowledgement of the difference, but not othering. You know, it's about celebrating that, oh, yes, the other, the idea of other is everything, that we are, we are all other from each other. There is no, there's a way to create a a semantic that makes it feel like there's a superior and an other as opposed to being like 
we are all individuals and I it's I'm being a bit redundant to things I've said earlier today but that I I think is really important that it's about the celebration of like oh great how fantastic I get a different perspective here um and a different life experience um in regards to how I'm kind of just coping with everything I've uh I've been lucky enough to really be doing a lot of um, personal creative projects. I'm in class, that's what I came from today. I'm in improv class at Impro Studio, uh, which is a great studio. They actually have a great, you can check them out on YouTube, uh, the, the Improvised Generation. Yes. Which is, uh, I was, if, you, if you weren't gonna plug that, I was gonna plug yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who Aliza Pearl, who I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, is a part of, she plays the captain, in fact uh of the USS McGinley and yeah I up uh, five five seasons and I guessed it on one uh episode last year um but they're they're terrific so I've been in class for that I've taken a few other um a, a writing and acting class at a BGB studio so I've been in class a bit um and then I've had various projects that had kind of been sitting on my metaphorical shelf um, that I've pulled out and friends who've had projects that just to read them out loud, a lot of, lot of readings, Zoom readings. So I am, I'm quite well versed in the Zoom world at this point. I live um, my life on this thing now. This is like, yeah. what, I think we usually do a Friday night chat and when I'm Debbie's on my Friday night chat with yeah. Star Trek people from the yeah. cruise, which you should totally come to. Oh, oh yeah. It's I'll really totally. fun. And, oh, but I couldn't do it last night. I had been Zoomed all week. <laughs> And I was just like, this is hours and hours. Yeah. And I was like, I, and I'm doing gaze in space in, tonight. And I said, yeah. okay, I got to be fresh. Yeah, I got to be that's, good for gaze in space. <laughs> that's definitely, I, I, yeah, on a, like a weekly, daily basis, I'm always being, okay, I have this many hours of this. Like if I, the days I do have class, like, okay, that's, I'm going to do less in the morning or trying to get out and yeah, just trying to um, exercise, just like walk. I have, I'm in the guest house and my parents are in the main house. And so we have a little bit of a yard where I can kind of just walk around the perimeter, <laughs> uh, which is good. I did just actually order that hopefully is coming soon. These cross ropes, which are weighted jump ropes. Oh yeah. Um, I use those actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. good. Do you like them? <laughs> I love them. Oh but great. You'll be surprised how hard it is at first, but yeah. adapt pretty quickly. Well, I'm glad because I really wanted something that felt like I could do it in a, you know, smaller space like I could do it at home and um but to really you know just keep the body going and just because that's I've always been very kinesthetically tied to my emotional state so just getting getting out and sweating and just um I have to, I'm not I'm trying to hold myself more accountable in that regard because I know I always feel better if I at least walk a bit it's true. so it's true um, we do feel better when we take care of our bodies yeah but that's that's been my um main kind of a journey and then yeah as of late continuing to educate myself um more and more about you've been tweeting some great books and references thank you i yeah i uh, yeah white fragility is really great and then uh, i just started and then yeah beyond the gender binary just read and then i just started reading how to be anti uh, how to be an anti-racist mm -hmm. uh, uh which is also super super great and what I think is important about all of these books is that they are so they're specific, they're universal, which is exactly what Trek is too. You know, that talking about specific issues then illuminates the, the, the larger systemic issues that we face and how we can all, you know, look inside ourselves um, and, and be better. Um, and uh, so that's been, um, I've been grateful to have that opportunity and the time to learn more about that and you know um two quick things the new york equivalent mary of what you just said about being able to go out and walk around we have a beautiful terrace that other people may call a fire escape but it's a beautiful <laughs> terrace and yeah. we oftentimes sit out there and it's like oh wow look fresh air it's still yeah. new york everybody fresh air uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say, going back to what you were talking about earlier about uh, talking to people who think they're Star Trek fans but don't quite get it, the third uh, event Gaze in Space did took place in San Francisco, and we did a party, 
and it was great. Everybody had fun. It was wonderful. Cool. It was when we premiered the Rainbow Tribble. It was the first time. I love my Rainbow Tribble. In the world had seen the Rainbow Tribble. It was great weekend, and it was wonderful. Uh, so we did our party on Saturday night. On Sunday afternoon, in the dealer's room, a woman approached me and said, aren't you Dan? I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Dan. I'm Dan Deeby. What's up? <laughs> I, I can see you saying that. <laughs> I kind of did. Uh, but I said, yeah, hey, how are you? You know, and she said, you know what? I'm a little embarrassed. And I said, well, why? She said, I really wanted to come to your event last night, but I'm from the Midwest. I don't know any gay people. And to be honest, I kind of think Please don't. She was very apologetic. Very like, you know, when it's just like, I'm going to say something that will be offensive, but please, I'm not trying to be offensive. Mm -hmm. And she uh -oh. just, and I was just like, I was like, come on, lady, hit me, hit me. You can't, New York, hit me. And she was very honest and said, look, I, I don't think it's right. I was raised to think it wasn't right, but Roddenberry believed that everyone's equal. So, and that's, I believe in Roddenberry. I believe in Star Trek, but I couldn't get myself to come to your event because I thought I wouldn't be accepted or maybe it is really wrong. And she and I had a half an hour conversation in the center of the dealer's room and it to this day is one of the proudest moments I have had working with Gaze in Space because when she and I parted, her mind was changed. Mm -hmm. She, we had the talk where it was like, well, what do you think a gay guy is? What do you think a gay guy does? Like, I can't dance? Oh, already, your theory is blown to hell. Like, <laughs> We're people. We're normal people. Like, and we had that connection. And I swear to God, the fact that I changed one mind. I mean, Mary, I, you have changed a million, I'm sure. But for me to change one in that moment meant so. I mean, that's yeah. one of the reasons Games in Space still exists. Mm -hmm. Because we can do that. Because I really feel that if someone is a Star Trek fan, it's in there. It's yeah. in there. You just gotta get to it. Yeah, that's yeah. That is a great story, and I I agree. I I, I hope that there, and I I hope and believe that that's that's what's more likely to be true for for most fans that are conflicted. And yeah, hopefully, yeah. That I do believe that art can can affect change and that these stories can affect change. And so, yeah, that that seed can be planted, however deep, and it just takes the right watering <laughs> and discussion. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's great to hear that very specific story. Yeah. Yeah, that's one that I will uh, never, ever forget. And the fact that you're a part of creating those stories, like, it's, it's, <laughs> It's incredible. It, it really is. And, you know, like, thank goodness it's someone like you who's cast in this role. If, if somebody who didn't give a crap was cast as Laurel, what, what a loss. Can, can you give that a crap? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Can you really not give a crap after you're a cast in Star Trek and after you see all the response of the fans? Because I feel like, I feel like either the Star Trek fans are, are blessed with actors who are lovely people, I would say 95% of everyone that I have interacted with as an actor, and I've interacted with pretty much everybody at this point, <laughs> is freaking fantastic. And it's like, you know, what comes first, a fantastic person being on Star Trek? Or, you know, were their minds and hearts changed by some of the things that they've heard? And I mean, look at, look at the Next Gen cast. They've been getting stories at cons for, you know, 35 plus years. And it's, it's, uh, it's it's 
it's very moving and just having working with Kate and seeing how many people were sitting at her table she's signing books she goes why does everyone cry to me when they come up <laughs> and I'm like it's because you moved them like yeah you know, and she, she gets them on some level but it's so like there's so much emotion all the time that I think it's you know it, it changes a person even just being tr- such you know peripherally involved you know it changes you and you know I, I have a bleeding heart so everyone comes up to me and says to me something and I'll be like oh my god I'll start crying <laughs> but you know it, it yeah. your your cast is and I keep saying it your cast is wonderful and it's yeah. I think it just maybe the project just attracts a certain kind of person yeah I I mean it's it's definitely that question I, I can't help but also believe a bit in destiny I mean the amount of coincidences or whatever you want to call them with the cast, like, you know, we were talking about Mary Wiseman, we were in school together, literally in the same class at Juilliard. Mm. And Wilson and I were at our friend's wedding when I was eight. And, you know, and I too grew up loving Anthony and Red. And like, it just the, the list goes on and on. And I think we did have moments of being like, how crazy that all of these synchronicities um, have led us to this moment. So I, I think there's, there's an element of that I certainly like to believe um in the magic of it um and just my journey in in being a part of the franchise in the first place and then how much the characters grew like that all feels just very fortuitous um and then i think also once you're a part of it yes there is a higher calling like it's it's the right people but then we get activated to a new level like you 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 do realize the impact and it is very moving i mean i remember just even when i was initially at announced that it was ca- announced that I was cast um the response I got on Twitter of just people saying welcome or whatever it was before even seeing anything um and then of course it's just grown more and more and more um since the show has aired and you just yeah I yeah. certainly for me it's if you don't rise to the occasion what are you doing what 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 better use of my time do I have to then to rise to the occasion of this platform like <laughs> it's just uh, yeah and i am going to put an absolute answer on the question mary was amazing before star trek continues to be amazing with star trek and will be even better in the future because that's what amazing people i want to see you on strange new worlds that would be very cool we had a couple people in the comments asking about that i want to see you on strange new worlds well yeah it and, and, would and, be- Super down, you just let them know. <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to tweet CBS saying uh, which of their favorite actors that they're Where? hoping to be on future uh, seasons of uh, shows, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mary would not object to that. I would not be upset. I would, there no Klingon wrath would come out of that. <laughs> Hey Dan, I think if we if we are gonna wrap up soon, we can have everyone tell the audience where they can find everyone on the internet. Dan's not having a. Oh, uh-oh. We got some AirPod. Up oh, with not working, Dan. Rich, can you hear me? I can oh, hear no. you. One moment. One moment. <laughs> I'm gonna give you. Great. Yes, hilarious. Yeah. Oh, you know what? If you guys could see the look he just gave me, <laughs> because he he was like, "Yeah, Dan, these now." <laughs> the tech yeah, guy, he he shoulders the burden. But I'm sorry, Debbie. Oh, we have to show the 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 question, right? Oh yes. We oh, keep okay. forgetting about the jersey. There's no truth. It doesn't matter. We're just having a philosophical discussion. <laughs> okay. okay. I came in late. I came in late. Everybody keep talking. Oh, oh no. no. Now no, we're no. doing the trivia. Sorry. We're going to oh, do it. Oh, my God. It's going to be great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a good scene. Such yeah. a great yeah. scene. When, I, when we Ooh. got that finale script. I remember just being like, oh, it's the cavalry coming in. I had had that dream since season one. I was like, just one moment where Tyler and Arell come in and we're cavalry coming in. And then it happened. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm here to save all of you men. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and by the way, you're welcome, but we're still not friends. Like, calm down. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, just saving right. your lives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, ah. I don't know if this, this would be funny if this ends up being the question, but something um, that uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Martin, who is an awesome lover of, of Trek and many things, and I met through uh, Bo Young Kim last year. Love her. Uh, I love and, her. Who's amazing. Um, uh, but he pointed out to me, we were talking deep, deep Klingon talks, um, that the cleave ship in the, uh, premiere episode or the, the, the two part pilot is this devastating sign of destruction that it destroys, um, I uh, forget the name of the Federation ship, but you know, just kill Genzo. Not the shed. It's the the one that the the admiral's in. Um, oh yes, um, yes. But you know, it's just one of the most terrifying moments because of the cloaking device, and you don't see it, and it's all of the and you know, the reality of all these lives lost. And so to have it at the end that Laurel comes in with this ship that was this sign of the enemy, and then he uses it to aid the Federation. And like oh. when he said that to me, I was like, oh, it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Uh, it uh, is beautiful right and i think that that is like it's just like that articulates so much of laurel's journey is like she uses what takuvma was like using but for a greater purpose and to be a better ally so anyway wow you know what mary i wish that was going to be my question because that is so <laughs> more freaking insightful uh, uh than mine uh wow that yeah now that you're yeah. saying oh, yep yep yeah. uh <laughs> yeah uh, uh but here's here's the question the question uh is a little less a question and more of a how do you say today is a good day to die in klingon that i can do <laughs> I'll be thank like, god uh, because i couldn't prove you wrong because i can't do yeah. it so. <laughs> this is one this is one that i like have down like if we go Helumech Kak Judgvam There we go. Oh I have to yeah. so what? good day is a good day to die. Um mm. yeah that's a also another fun fact is my uh commanding officer is played by Glenn Hetrick our Oh um, no way oh. Yeah, uh, the makeup guy the makeup guy yeah the designer yeah no kidding mm -hmm. that's awesome that oh, he got wow. into the makeup yeah and he was so thrilled because he's a big trekkie and he was the whole time and he was just like oh my god and he looks so badass and all this stuff and he's like oh my god i'm a klingon like you know like, <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the club i'm in the yeah. club <laughs> like, oh this is awesome and i was like i know right it's so it's so fun to hear about these these really badass looking dudes yeah. that like have these geek out moments. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's yeah, that's like most of like people You're wrong cuz I can't do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> this is one this is one that I like have down like if you go Helumech kak judgvam. There we go. Oh, I have to yeah. So what? good. Day is a good day to die. Um mm. Yeah, that's a. Also, another fun fact: is my uh, commanding officer is played by Glenn Hetrick. Our oh uh, no oh. way, uh, the makeup guy. The makeup yeah. guy? Yeah, the designer. Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That's awesome that oh, he got wow. into the makeup. Yeah, and he was so thrilled because he's a big Trekkie, and he was the whole time, and he was just like, "Oh my god!" And he looks so badass and all this stuff, and he's like, "Oh my god." I'm a Klingon. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm in the club. I'm in the yeah. club. Like, oh, this is awesome. And I was like, I know, right? It's, so, it's so fun okay. to hear about these, these really badass looking dudes yeah. that like have these geek out moments. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's, yeah, that's like most of like people's time on set. It's just like, oh my God, this is, and then we have to be like, in the scene and we're like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> uh, either that or you're crying together in very yes. tender human moments. Like it's, you know, it's very true. It's you guys it's run the way. gamut. You run the gamut. We yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also so interesting to me because Discovery, I think, is the first time the Klingons were actually scary. 
<laughs> and I know TOS fans for the movies, like they got, a, they got scarier yeah. in the movies than they were in the original series. But holy crap, I didn't know what I was looking at mm -hmm. the first time I saw you guys. And the root of fear is uncertainty. Like mm -hmm. I could not pin down mm -hmm. what was going, where's the back of your head? I don't <laughs> know. It seems to go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and the 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 embracing of the language to be so alien, so alien, uh, made you guys more terrifying. Mm -hmm. And somehow you have managed to create like like the fact that people know you're an amazing, lovely person, and that <laughs> came through the most terrifying Klingon I've ever seen. <laughs> amazing. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I felt that we, yeah, we were really trying to make them as alien as possible um, in order to really let them be this, this separate entity and, and yeah, really kind of the, what the Klingons have represented throughout the series, but take it to whatever next level and including the language that, you know, we hadn't had these um, full scenes um, that weren't on the bridge um, in Klingon it, to the extent that we had them. So it was really about fleshing out the culture more in, in its entirety and, and, you know, within their, their uh, terrifying nature, also giving a level of empathy as to why they are um, defensive of their culture and why they are wary of the Federation. You know, it's rightfully so. Um, so I, I'm I'm grateful to have contributed to that, and yeah, to 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 learn the language and all that, all that stuff. It's it's a whole culture, and it, it's you. There are literal books that you can read. <laughs> well, when we when we first meet you, you are you are really cruel, terrifying, rapist, <laughs> and yet somehow, like you say, as the show progresses, we understand. That's exactly what was happening. That's not what we were seeing. But it's it's so interesting to me that the writers were willing to go that far with the message that you were able to terrify us when we first met you, thinking perhaps there was nothing else to you other than hor like horrible. Mm -hmm. And then you know, less than a year later, we're like, she needs to be in charge. That's <laughs> how good she is. If, mm -hmm. if there's any hope, it has to be her. What an amazing growth mm -hmm. to go through. Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that aspect of it up as well, because, well, it, twofold, because um, that was obviously something I was extremely sensitive to and knowing that part of the story was going to be so misconstrued. Like heading in, I just, like, like I said, Shad and I were like, well, we know that they're gonna be thinking it's this way, but if we know the truth, then the rewatch will be informative in a different way. Um, so that was something that we really, you know, took seriously and um, really, you know, the, the clarity of the fact that this, it is this other entity, like the story of Tyler and Narell is so, it is this unique Star Trek story that is not grounded in like, a human story. This is a, something very specific to a Klingon who has transformed her lover and then the power of humanity um, overpower, like all that sort of stuff. And that was very much uh, how I embraced Lorel's journey and why she ultimately chooses to do the operation on Tyler in the first season is that she recognizes that there is something more to these humans than she's been led to believe, um, which through her relationship with Admiral Cornwell who is the, the, the honestly, if, if it weren't for Cornwell, I don't know how much Laurel would have changed, but she has this experience, which makes me think of your, what you just spoke about with, um, uh, with the gaze in space when you were talking to the woman who was like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go. Laurel to me is that person who has been brought up a certain way, has only known her own culture and the, the rules and regulations and belief systems that they have, but there's enough in her and that for me is like luckily i had the eyes were my biggest way to kind of you know articulate her otherwise and for me it was those moments of uncertainty that she had where 
she couldn't help but hear what Cornwell was saying to her, or she couldn't help but see that Tyler was more than just a shell. Um, and that she hears Saru as well, who's a fellow alien, non-human. Mm -hmm. And to me that, and then that makes her a good leader and an ally because while she doesn't completely change her belief system, she is able to understand enough to make compromises. And like, mm -hmm. that's the hope is that you, we have enough people in the world who can be like, okay, I'm too smart and too empathetic to not listen to my heart and my brain right now and make this change so the fact that she can be all of that is just like a thrill and then of course there are moments there where she's just utterly klingon and terrifying and intense which is fun and great <laughs> and screaming well. and screaming yeah. at yeah. cornwell and that yeah. great scene and i love that and the fighting and all that yeah. gotta love it but um i do i do hope that that is part of um what her journey can continue to reverberate as, as people continue to watch or rewatch, is that she is hope for the person who maybe doesn't quite understand um, the Federation ideals, but um, is willing to, to start to understand them. <laughs> well, you know, I will, uh, I mean, I'll be totally honest. I think of all of the Discovery characters Laurel is the character that I understood the least on first viewing, but now, and maybe it's because you're amazing, but <laughs> now I kind of see so many more layers to her that, uh-oh, she might become my, don't tell Anthony, she <laughs> might become my favorite in the fact that you're able to tell i mean and you have somehow managed to soften the robert o'reilly klingon eyes because you <laughs> have to tell so much <laughs> in those eyes like you, you have to right uh, uh, that's so funny uh, uh and also okay before i go on fawning all over you uh <laughs> I noticed earlier that the father of all Klingons tweeted about tweeted. tonight. The mother yeah. of all Klingons? Did that yeah. happen? That was uh, pretty awesome. Calling me mother. I never expected. Never Good expected job. Good mother. job, Michael Dorn. Good yeah. job. <laughs> it was an honor. And he's been so lovely in our, well, we've had a few inven uh, inventions, <laughs> interactions at conventions, which. Which has shortened it now. Now it's inventions. <laughs> <laughs> um he's been just the loveliest and kindest and, and uh, i of course am a deep have deep respect and admiration for all he's done on the shows multiple shows movie, you know incredible yeah dorney is um dorney's amazing he uh, uh i don't know if you know but before gaze in space i started something called the hashtag we want wharf campaign that was to you. Try to get, you started that. That was me. That <laughs> I didn't was know me. that. I didn't Before know that I you. was super gay, everybody, I was super Klingon. Although Dorney <laughs> no, told no, me, no, like no. Dan, <laughs> no, 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 he was like, e Dan, look, even if we get the show made, man, you can be a human, never a Klingon. <laughs> you are way too happy. <laughs> no one will buy it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he is such an amazing guy and I think has been, you know, he's been such, to me, the Roddenberry through line from TNG to DS9. He has held true to Roddenberry's like, you know, yes, he's a Klingon and Klingons do some scary stuff. Uh, but the way that Worf looks at the universe, the universe is very much morally right and wrong there is honorable and there is dishonorable and end of story that's it and especially right now i think in our world today how great would it be if people started saying the phrase shame on you to someone who did something bad and it meant something to them and it affected change in their behavior that's war baby like yeah. Sorry, I love Worf. Anyway, what were we about to do? Yeah. Were we going to tell people where to find everybody online? Yeah, I guess. Yes. Oh my God, it is 11 o'clock, everybody. I'm sorry. I just, 
Sorry. Yeah, and some people have to work in the morning, Dan. Oh, man. Some people have to get suited up for sharks at, like, 7.30. That's exactly right, Amy. That's me. <laughs> Holy moly. Does Mary know? Sorry. Does Mary know where know. you work? No. No, I don't think she does. I work, work with shark? Aquarium. Yeah, I work at the New York Aquarium. I'm a shark biologist. <sighs> that is very cool. <laughs> so it's, here, it's here, the though. early rising in the mornings. And oh, man. My days off are in the middle of the week. So huh. I'm really working on weekends. Gotcha. <laughs> so cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, so everybody, here's all the information. Uh, Follow us at Gaze in Space, three A's and three A's. Uh, please, please, please uh, visit the charity that we partnered with tonight. Uh, it is at N-Q-T-T-C-N. Mary, am I right? I, yes, yes, I, I just sent it to someone in the chat before, so yes, that is N-Q-T-T-C-N, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're amazing and uh please support them in what they're doing and uh already everybody thank you so much for being so generous with your donations for this like when we do these events we ask everyone to to pay a minimum dollar to be here so that we can make sure that this environment is a safe one for everybody we know who's here nobody's going to come in and cause some shenanigans and if they do that's why we have Walt. We have seen earlier, trigger, finger, he would have had them out of here. Um, so uh, that's why we require the dollar. But you guys have been so generous that, like I said, uh, in fact, I think it's up to 550 at this point that we're going to be able to give to them to help them, uh, you know, continue the good work that they do. So thank you all for that. Um, and uh, yeah, be awesome. Everybody be good to each other. And if you can, make somebody feel good about themselves. Make them smile. Tell them they're handsome. You could tell me that too. You never know. Like it's gonna go a long way. Mary, thank you so much for being you, for being awesome, and for loving us gays because mother, we love you. <laughs> mother loves you. It has ah. been my absolute honor uh, to be here. Um, and I'm, I'm just so thrilled to support you guys and support this great, um, foundation and just to keep putting positivity into the world, um, within Trek and beyond. And it's, it is, it's such a gift to be a part of this community. Um, and, uh, yeah. What's your Twitter? I, What's your Twitter? I am Mary the Chief. Isn't that the Instagram. best? Right? That's, the, that's the best, easiest <laughs> yeah. at. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for that one. But yes, on, on Twitter and Instagram, Mary the Chief. And uh, yeah, as we, in Klingon, uh, you say, uh, thank you is katlo, which has only been said once by Laurel to Vogue in the Dilithium <laughs> scene when we're getting all flirty because we don't usually say thank you, but you know, when you're flirting, you might as well. Um, but so <laughs> I say hello, all of you. Um, it's, yeah, it's just been a real spell to be here. We love you so much. Thank you. And uh, we will be asking you to do this again at some point. Just say. Okay. And yeah. I just want to say thank you for having me as well, Dan. Thank you so much. Oh my God, Amy, you are amazing. Like, oh God. Love you. Love you. The whole reason that we know Kate Mulgrew is thanks to Amy. <laughs> well, I, I interviewed Kate a couple of times, but if you know Kate, she's like, you're okay during the interview. And then afterwards, she's like, I'm sorry. Who are you? She That's meets so many people. Amy, Amy <laughs> was like, no, 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 it's Dan, the gay guy. You know him. <laughs> I did not say and the gay then, guy. <laughs> boom. Well, you should have. Uh, <laughs> And then boom, and Amy was kind enough to put us in touch with Mary so that she could be here. So, yes, Amy, I got your you back. So You're welcome. And you can find me at Lightstar1013 on Twitter and Instagram, L I G H T S T A R 1013. Awesome. And Kira, Kira and where can we find Kira? Oh, okay. Um, you can find me on my Instagram. Uh, by at... the way, I would... <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, well... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> You can find me on my Instagram at sharktrek underscore 701. 
and on my Twitter at Sharkosaurus. That's shark underscore O underscore Saurus. This guy's about to say something, everybody. Get ready. Oh, yeah, I would say something, but you took away my mic for me. Sorry, I took away your moment. Uh, huge thanks to the first gentleman of Gaze in Space, Mr. Richard Hart. Walt, you're an excellent chief of security, my friend. Thank you. Yes. Debbie, great to see you. Huge mm -hmm. thanks to everyone who was here. We love you so much, and uh, we will sure. see you again. I, I think I said thank you to Kira. Kira, did I say <laughs> thank you? Um... No, I didn't. There was hesitation. <laughs> so you're right. Although Kira knows, Kira, how do I end every interaction you and I have, be it in person or text? Tell everybody. What do I you're say? Amazing. <laughs> you're an amazing human being and I love you. There it so, is. So yeah, they know, they know. Love you guys again. Thank you so much and we'll see you again soon. Great. Thank you all. Bye, Bye guys. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> end this thing. That went great.